Hello everybody and welcome into my latest live video. My name is Kerry Holzman and today is Thursday the 26th of August 2021. Today I want to cover a very commonly asked question uh, regarding people that are interested in becoming computer technicians. Uh, in most cases the people who are asking the questions are asking the wrong questions because they typically ask what tools do I buy or what how much money should I charge or they're, they're thinking so far ahead about what they're gonna have for dessert they haven't even thought about what they're gonna have for breakfast so what I want to do in this video is to set up your expectations properly if you wish to undertake this task to be self-employed to earn your own amount of money as much as you want to make to do as much or as little work as you want to do and to have full control and full freedom uh, in, in everything that that regards with re again money how busy you want to be how often you want to work and how much you want to make it sounds great doesn't it but nobody's gonna come over it's highly unlikely and just put it on your lap you will have to get up off of your butt and make it happen. You must will it into existence. And not everybody has it within them to do that or chooses not to or isn't ready yet. So if you want to start a new career as a computer technician because you've learned a lot over the years and you enjoy doing it, you only need three little things to get started. Seriously, that's all you need. It's not about certifications. It's not about tools. It's not about billing software. It's not about licenses. It's not about insurance. You don't need any of that to get started. Now, if you have any of that to get started, it doesn't hurt. But most of us, when we start in a new career, we're doing so because we're not making enough money or we're unhappy in our current career, or perhaps we don't even have a career. And when you've had enough and you've decided you want to be in control of your life and this is something you'd like to pursue, I'm going to tell you in August of 2021 what you need to start your own computer repair business. Are you ready? Get a pen and paper. You're going to write down three things. Thing number one you need to find some work to do. That means you have to knock on doors, introduce yourself, preferably to businesses, not to home users. Home users are not where the money is. They're a waste of your time. They will suck you dry financially and put you out of business. Avoid any home users. Go to industrial parks and businesses. Have uh, you know business cards, print some up, Go to Vista Prince, whatever. Say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a computer technician. And uh, if there's anything that you guys need, I don't know if you're happy with your support now, but here's my card. If you're going to go with home users, don't go knocking door to door or cold calling. I strongly advise against it. What you need to do is hopefully through word of mouth for friends or family, you start to establish some work. So the first thing you have to do to become a self-employed computer technician is something you will have to do forever. And that is find the work. Okay? There's, there's no rhyme or reason to finding the work, but you find what works for you and what you're comfortable with doing. If you want to put an ad on Craigslist just to get started, just to give yourself experience, it's free. You're going to have a lot of people wasting your time, but there's a valuable learning experience. You're going to pay for an education in college, or you're going to pay for the education out of college. Because if you put an ad in Craigslist for free, you're going to get a lot of people who expect a lot for nothing. But if you're willing to put in that effort so you can have the experience, it's an alternative to school that, in my opinion, is just as valid. 
That's one, get the work. Two, you're going to need a piece of remote software between the pandemic and the cost of traveling. It's going to increase your cost and increase your risk if you have to go on site. Now, with businesses, it's important that you're on site, at least to establish things. But with consumers, there's never rarely a reason to ever go into a consumer's home. You will find the most disgusting living conditions in a lot of consumers' home, especially if you're going on the low end of the scale, trying to drum up business and you've lowered your prices. You will attract the whitest trash. You will attract people who live in their own filth and they're going to expect you to come over and touch their booger-covered computer that's infected with viruses and pornography as you step around dog feces on the floor. No exaggeration, it's quite common. The lower your price is, the more often you're gonna see that. So you're gonna need a good piece of remote software because you'll be able to log in immediately and help them without ever having to step foot into their house. If you step foot into their house, and let's say they're a female alone and you're a male doing the work, what's to stop them from saying that you made inappropriate advances towards them or worse? There is a significant legal liability that they could lie in order to extract money from you. So, I've never had that happen and I don't know anybody who's had it happen, but it could happen, but not if you work remotely. So, First thing, you've got to find the work. The second thing is you need a tool to work remotely. That's the subject of this video, Instant House Call. Instant House Call is not a piece of remote software for somebody to work from home. That is not what it is. You can use other remote software for that. Uh, Instant House Call stands on its own as a unique piece of software designed for technicians with built-in system utilities that uh, have the most commonly needed utilities technicians need to clean up virus infected computers or to get system specifications and assets collected very quickly without having to go and download a bunch of different pieces of software and then worry about license violations, which again, nothing you need to worry about when you're starting. But if you don't get that straight when you're starting to seriously make money, you could be sued. Just ask the Geek Squad. Finally, so you found the work, you've got your remote software that is designed for easy installation for your customer who doesn't know anything about computers. That's the other thing about most remote software. It can be a little bit too complex for most users to understand how to put on. So instant house calls, real easy. It can be a one click thing that's branded to your name. So it looks very professional. It looks like it's your own deal. It does impress and instill confidence in the customers. Finally, you need to be able to do the work. Now, being able to do the work means you don't take on work that you don't know how to do, like server administration when you're just starting out, or active directory issues. You're going to find your business is going to close down before it ever gets off the ground if the first thing you do is bite off more than you can chew. So take on jobs that you honestly feel that you can complete. And if you cannot complete them, you do not abandon your customer. You call another technician for help. If you need guidance on how to build your business, there are tutors that will charge you that have their own computer businesses and will gladly pass on their experience to you so you don't have to learn everything the hard way. However, very few people would ever give that away for free because they could be busy working. And if they're helping you and guiding you in your business, they're losing money for the customers they're not helping. So they need to establish an income. But they're not keeping themselves, uh, their industry a secret. They will tell you the mistakes they made and how to avoid them. And they will give you the advice you need if you cannot figure it out on your own. When I started as a computer technician, I started uh, working for a company. And after a few companies decided that I should be the one making all the money, and the hardest part for me personally was finding the work because I'm not a good salesman. 
most to this day of my work comes from referrals. I found advertising to be a waste of money. Joining the Chamber of Commerce was a waste of money. Even joining referral groups was a waste of time and money. I spent a lot of money trying to make money. There is an expression, you need money to make money. But to get started, you just need the will. You need motivation. Your limits are self-imposed. You're your biggest obstacle to your own success. Once you get over that and you start to tackle the beast, don't expect to hit a home run the first time you get up to bat. You're going to make mistakes. Ideally, you will learn from them, improve, and keep growing and expanding and making even more money and having even more happy customers. Get the customer. Step one. Have a good piece of remote software that's designed to help repair computer problems quickly. Remember, the more people you can help, the more money you can make. Three, know how to fix the job, okay? So that means to understand how to Google search. Understand if, they're, if you get in over your head, do not abandon your customer. Your reputation is going to go down the toilet and you will fail before you barely even got out the door. So if you agree to see something, uh, you agree to fix a, thing, a problem, you see that through. Even if it means you have to hire somebody else and it costs you more than you're charging the customer because that is your cost of education. Make sure you watch and learn how the person fixed it and it'll be worth every penny because the next time you encounter that, you will fix it yourself and then you will be in a profit situation. Now the instant house call software as I mentioned, it is not a piece of software intended for people to work from home. It is a piece of software intended for technicians to be able to immediately connect to a problem computer and solve the problem with built-in tools and utilities designed specifically for the common repairs that computers need. It is not a remote access tool. It is a remote repair tool. Now, I did an interview with the owner of Instant House Call a couple of years ago. He came out to Studio A and we had a one-on-one -on -one in person to describe every bit of it, how you download it, how you use it, and every single feature on it we went through. And I'm going to show that interview to you here in a moment. Now first, I want to say hello to everybody in the chat. I got right out of the gate here because I got a lot to cover, but thank you to Rock and Rob. He's contributed five bucks. He says, let's get this party started. He says, hello, Carrie and the Blue Mod crew. Hello to Chris and Tony and Dom and Robert and, and uh, Made Geek bass, Bass Boots, Edwin Ojeda, Patrick Russo, Matthew, Vinco, Kevin, Derek, uh, Marco, Johnny, Interwebs. Fritzer contributes $5. He says, thank you for your knowledge and implementation of your craft skills. Right on. Thank you, Fritzer. And um, uh, everybody else, there's just a lot of comments flying through here. Uh, Jim Barksdale wants to know why he cannot get a 200R. I don't know why you can't get one. Amazon's got them right now. Um, you're going to pay a bit for them. But the world has become an entitled and impatient and demanding place. Everything that I, I get these emails from people and they say, well, this thing you recommended is sold out. So now what do I do? You wait like everybody else. If you don't want to wait, you pay. Okay. So if you want the 200 R it's on Amazon. If it's too much money for you, then like the rest of us, wait till it comes back in stock. It's not a big deal. It's sort of like, why can't I find a Christmas tree on December 24th? What do you think? Uh, the same is true if you tried to find a Christmas tree today. There's more than you can pick from right now, but there's not a whole lot of people that want them. So if you're waiting to buy in the worst possible time you could ever buy, why in the world would you think that it should be available? I just don't understand why Christmas trees aren't available on December 24th. I'm sorry. Well, if you wait and in a couple of weeks, they'll be giving them away. There are massive distribution problems. I want to remind you, we're living in a pandemic. We're also living in a country where no one wants to work. The amount of people who are wanting to work is the, uh, the lowest I've ever seen in my life. So this has never been a better time for you to become a computer technician. 
Seriously, there is a massive shortage of computer technicians, whether you want to be self-employed or you want to work for somebody else. But if you start self-employed and it just isn't working for you, you will now have experience that you can put on your resume when you apply for other computer support jobs. So either way, even when you lose, you win. Now, you've got to be reasonable. You cannot expect to be paid a million dollars when you have zero experience. And at the same time, the less money you charge, the harder you're going to work. But in exchange for that, you're going to get experience. You will, it's priceless. And as you gain more experience and you become faster and you start getting more customers, you start boosting your hourly rate or your, your, just whatever you're charging and however you're charging it. This reduces the number of customers you have. Get rid of the cheap ones. So when you're starting out, you take what you can get. But as you improve and get better and there's more demand for you, the way that you weed out the ones that are costing you money is you raise the rate. That way, you're not being rude and saying, I don't want to service you anymore. You simply state, we've had an increase in the rate. Just like when you go to buy gasoline for your car or the electric bill for your house or your internet bill, the prices go up even though you did nothing wrong. If you don't like that, take your business somewhere else. Just like everybody else. So that's, what, that's the process. Now, if you need help getting your business started and you want advice, there are a number of podcasts like Podnuts, uh, Mike Tech Show, um, uh, 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 MSP Unplugged. Uh, there's a, a gentleman named uh, Carl uh, Pal Palachek. Also does MSP or Managed Service Provider. A wonderful, great advice. And that's if you want to start getting in. When we say MSP, it's Managed Service Providing, and it's generally for businesses but it could be a home business could be somebody who's a real estate agent working from home or a tax accountant working from home and they need somebody they can count on for support and to ensure their systems are secure and if you find yourself in trouble or you need more guidance a doug betts does live windows training and does assist people but he will air it live on youtube so that there's a benefit to everyone and not just you who was in a similar situation and he doesn't have to keep repeating himself. And you can go there now as he's advised people starting up computer repair businesses. He's been in the business a long, long time. And now he's shifting gears into helping teach others. But the condition is he's going to air it on YouTube. If you don't like that, you can pay Tim Taylor out of Computer Works in Florida you can buy Tim Taylor's book on how to start a successful computer repair business. And Tim worked out of the trunk of his car and built up a million dollar company with over a dozen employees. But Tim's not giving that away for free. But he will hold your hand and he will give you advice, not just from somebody who talks, but from somebody who's actually done it. The only thing preventing you right now from becoming a computer technician is that you're either not willing to put the work into it or you don't want to be. That's it. There's no other reason you wouldn't be a computer technician. And those three things you need to get started are quite simple to acquire. Get the work. Get the repair tool to work remotely. And do the job. See it through. Get paid. Repeat. That's it all you have to do it is the easiest job you will ever have in your life and it will be rewarding again if it's just something that's not for you you can take your experience put it on your resume and now you're more likely to be hired because you have experience give yourself a year don't expect to go full-time you start part-time. Look at what I've done here on YouTube, okay? This is a good example. Started YouTube in 2008. Didn't make very many videos in 2008. Wasn't paying me any money. Same with 2009, 2010, 2011. But I still did it. Part-time. Very part-time. But then part-time started becoming more frequent in 2012, 2013. 2013, things really started to ramp up right up till about 2018. Then I started doing live videos. Monetization started kicking in. 
Super Chat started kicking in. Financial incentives started and new opportunities started to sprout up without me doing anything. Companies were now coming to me saying, would you showcase our product? What would you charge us to show your product? I've been in this 13 years and I've only just now decided to go full time. And that's only because as a result of the part time uh, work I've been doing, Amazon Live reached out and said, would you like to do that? because it's too risky for me to put all my full-time work into one thing. I need to have security. So I need to be able to have some eggs in a basket over here and some eggs in a basket over there and some eggs in a basket over there. I can't have all my eggs in one basket, have that taken, stolen, or removed for any reason, and then I am out of work. That's something brilliant about being self-employed because when you work for somebody else, they can fire you. At least in Arizona, it's a right to work state. They can fire you at any time for any reason without any notice. So if you just bought a car or you had a medical emergency and now you've got these bills to pay, you're out of a job. I guess you could go file for unemployment and hope that goes through. But when you're self-employed, you can control how often you want to work, how long you want to take a vacation, how much money that you want to make. You start part-time, and if you enjoy it, and through referrals, you start ramping up. You listen to others who have done this from Podnuts and uh, the computer. Um, go to TechNibble. TechNibble has great resources including newsletters that you can brand with your name and send to your customers that looks like you wrote it yourself. That requires this much effort and that much money for a year's worth. It's very small. You'll earn it back on one customer call. Don't worry about what physical tools you'll need or what chair you need or what billing software you need. These are things that you can resolve when you need them, but you don't need them first. The first thing you need is to get the work. You need the tool remotely to do the work, and then you need to actually get the work done. Everything else after that is cake. That's simple, simple stuff. So I want to re-air the interview I did with Corey Fruitman of Instant House Call so you can see how it works. If you use the coupon code CARRY, you, you get a 15-day free trial. And for a while, Corey was even offering people uh, during the pandemic, the opportunity to start working remotely as technicians on their own, and he would help guide you through it. Now, he's not doing that anymore, but it was an amazingly generous offer that I'd never seen offered by anyone else in any industry anywhere in the world. So we're talking about an upstanding individual who owns this company. This product has been around for, I want to say, two decades. It's been refined, and it is tailored to repair uh, uh, remotely. Now, uh, any certifications are pointless. They're completely pointless. You want A+, you want Network+, plus. they are a complete and utter waste of money. Nobody, if you're self-employed, in my experience and in, in the people that I talk to that are my peers, have ever had to produce their certifications to get a job when you're self-employed in that regard. Now, when you start getting into the legal issues of HIPAA, FINRA, and compliance, that's a whole different story, but it does not involve A plus or Network Plus. These are sort of sophomoric certifications. The only time you should ever have to get any certification is if you have a job opportunity that requires it. So if you're working for an employer or you want to work for an employer or you're self-employed and you're bidding on a job and they say in order for you to achieve this job you must have this certification then and only then do you get the certification if it's worth it to you to apply for that job or one like it in the future. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. All you're trying to do is pat yourself on the back and show people how smart you are. It doesn't work very well. People are not impressed with your certifications. It just looks like you're bragging and have an egotistical self-esteem problem. So I would suggest to you, save your money and save your time, and don't waste it on certifications. 
unless a job opportunity hinges on it. And that's few and far between unless, like I said, it's a legal compliance issue and you won't be messing around with sophomoric certifications. You'll need real big boy certifications regarding FINRA and HIPRA for some of these. And FINRA is probably even more strict and it has nothing to do with anything CompTIA offers to the best of my knowledge. Also, if you're looking to work in corporate America and you want to do administrative work in a server room like Active Directory and all that, now you're talking about higher level, far more expensive certifications, Microsoft certifications. They cost into the thousands of dollars and have to be renewed on a regular basis, just like a license. But if the job's paying you that well, it's totally worth it. Otherwise, maybe you're just a fan of educating yourself with no financial uh, gain. You don't represent most people. I encourage education. And if you've got the money to spend and the time to spend in order to, for these personal gains for, that only help you, I, I certainly wouldn't discourage you from it. But I'm making an assumption here that you're looking to make some money, that times are tight and you're ready to go to work and you like computers and you've never done it before and you'd like to start. You don't need any of those certifications. They're a waste of your time. So, as I mentioned, there is um, a shortage of computer technicians. And a lot of the certifications that some companies once required they're so desperate for employees now that if you can prove that you have the skills through testing, they'll often hire you under the condition that you will acquire whatever the certification is within a certain period of time of your employment and otherwise you will be let go. Employees right now are able to demand higher salaries and come in with lower experience because companies are desperate. Too many people do not want to work. Everybody says they want a job, but few of those people who say that actually want to work. That is in your benefit. There has never been a better time to find an employer. Employers used to get thousands of resumes when they'd open one job opening. And they'd have a computer just look for keywords to auto filter because it was too much for an individual. That is not happening today, my friends. That is not happening. Whatever it is you think the world is like, it is not like that anymore. It has changed. Employers are desperate. They are desperate. So whatever you see in the chat room or you hear from anybody else, they are lagging behind. Their information is obsolete. That is not the way it is. Not in the USA. Not in August of 2021. I have yet to find a single employer in any industry in my city that isn't looking for help. It doesn't matter where you go, grocery store, department store, drug store, fast food, regular dine-in restaurant, they're all short on staff. They are desperate, desperate, and they are not going to turn away an employee over a certification, in most cases, they'll still require it, but they'd be willing to work with you on it and give you time to get it, presuming you could prove yourself that you're capable of doing the job in the interim. That's how desperate they are. This is not 2019 anymore, or for that matter, any other prior year. This is serious, and this can change your life if you're willing to stick your step out of your house <laughs> and let people know you're ready to work because you'll be one of the few who are actually doing it right now but if you want to work from home again for the same reason a few people want to work so there's more opportunity for work today in every single category of work there's shortage of doctors, there's shortage of nurses. You think of a career, Lyft and Uber drivers, there's a shortage. All of it. Every single employer is having a hard time finding employees. Therefore, 
customers are getting frustrated waiting for the amount of time it takes for them to get help. So if you're self-employed and you don't have any customers and you can help somebody immediately, that's in your advantage. None of those customers are going to ask if you have certification. They're so desperate to get help. The very fact that you're available and can help them now, I'm telling you, you won't see another time, highly unlikely, you will ever encounter a time like this in your life. This is like a big start over moment. And it's up to you if you want to continue to make excuses or if you actually want to make an attempt and have your dream job. There'll never be, it's highly unlikely going to be another time as ripe as this is right now. So uh, let me look in the chat real quick. We'll see if we have any other questions. And then I want to re-air the interview with Corey Fruitman. So I want you to understand why instant house call is critical if you want to be a self-employed computer technician and work from home so you don't have to endure customers' homes, liabilities, traffic, and other expenses such as, I don't know, getting dressed. <laughs> you can work from your home in whatever you wear comfortably and uh, not have to deal with traffic and gasoline and flat tires and get paid electronically with, through PayPal. You can take credit cards through Square or through PayPal. Got to make sure you get paid. Real quick, let me just take a look up in there in the chat. Let's see if we can have any questions real quick I haven't addressed. Some things, uh, by the way, are going to change forever. Uh, graphics card prices are not likely ever going to be $200 ever again. The, the whole thing has been reset now. It, it will start to become normal for the high-end graphics cards not to be $1,200 anymore. They're going to be closer to $1,800 from now on. Even after this pandemic and after distribution is fixed, it's going to be that way for a while until the market gets flooded, saturated, there's more competition. And then in about three years after that, maybe 2026, prices should start to come down to the levels we were accustomed to before. So do know that when distribution opens back up again, as far as graphics cards go, they are no longer, uh, again, uh, highly unlikely for there to be a $200 graphics card unless it's really old. Uh, manufacturers are not going to go through the process of, of producing a new graphics card and then lowballing the price. They don't have to, and this is their time to make their millions, and they're going to squeeze it for everything it's got. AMD is going to do it, NVIDIA is going to do it, every one of them is going to do it. And it's going to take a couple of years and enough competition to start bringing the prices back to their 2018 prices. Just be prepared for it. The standard normal price of a graphics card at entry level will be about double. Uh, I mentioned people are self limiting. You have your own limits, and your own beliefs are your own obstacles. You fight for your ignorance. This is what I see constantly in the chat room. Somebody says they build computers for $1,500. Somebody else says no one will pay $1,500 to buy a computer. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Remus Computer Solutions in Las Vegas, Nevada routinely sells computers at a minimum. $8,000 and up. And he has more work than you can possibly imagine. So if you're so close-minded that you think all you look at are poor people and you don't think anybody other than poor people exist on this planet, that's your personal limitation. And somebody like you will never sell a $1,500 computer because you have the wrong attitude. Computers routinely sell for over $2,000 by the thousands every day at Newegg. By the thousands, if you had any idea 
how many people buy computers specifically for gaming at places like Newegg and Amazon from custom built manufacturers like ABS and Falcon Northwest and Alienware. Your mind is so close to anything outside of what you choose to see that you have limited yourself and have denied yourself any opportunity to explore something because you don't believe it exists. In the meantime, if you actually knew the truth, you'd realize there are a lot more computers being sold for $1,500 than you can possibly imagine. You, you don't have a clue. But this is what people do. They put their limitations on other people and damned be the facts. They want you to share their limitations. Please don't. Human beings are their worst own enemy. In most cases, you stand in your own way. And when you try and convince other people that they should stand in their own way, you are doing more harm to the community. So be aware of that. You will be limited to what you believe. Nobody who ever became anybody ever thought like that. I'm just looking again through the comments just to see if there's any other questions I can answer for you guys because I'm tired of the excuses. People who make excuses are the very people I'm talking about. They talk and talk and talk and they do nothing and they tell you why they're doing nothing. It's static, it's noise, it's, it, 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 it is preposterous that they defend their own ignorance. Please do not buy into it. You are capable of doing things you have in, in all likelihood, if you would believe in yourself, you would achieve greatness. The only thing holding you back is you or somebody else convincing you that you should think like them and hold yourself back like they do. They are poison. They are poison to your success. They are poison to your happiness. Hey, there's Ryan in the chat room. Hey, Ryan. Jim Barksdale says he just finished his chemo treatment. Today he says, I'm 85 years old. I want to build my own computer and I live in Peoria. That's awesome, Jim. I know chemo's not easy, but it's worth it. And I hope that you will be cancer free. And there, there's nothing about age that has anything to do with being uh, building a computer. You're fully capable of doing it. It's incredibly simple, and you absolutely should do it. It'll be a wonderful experience, and you'll want to build another one. Just be careful because it can be expensive after you build the first one, and you want to build another one. Yeah, they start to pr the price goes up and up, right? <laughs> one computer, time now two, now three, now four. You go, darn you, Carrie. My bank account's empty. I've never been happier, but I have more computers than I know what to do with so much fun. It's so enjoyable. It's so rewarding. Hey, there's our buddy Marty Yoel in the chat room. Contributes 20 bucks. He says, uh, Marty's a good example. He says, I think every PC I have, and Marty's got about six between laptops and desktops, are over $2,000 each. And he recently bought them. So this idea that nobody... Let me tell you something right now. Anytime somebody starts a sentence with nobody does this, nobody does that, whatever nobody does, what they mean to say is I don't. And I'm closed-minded to be aware of anybody that exists outside of my personal bubble. These are my ignorant limitations that I like to expose, and I would like to shout them from the rooftops in the hopes that I will also encourage you to have my illness. They're like zombies. They want to turn you into a zombie. That's what zombies do. Brains. Become a zombie like us. Give up your hope. Give up on life. You're not good enough. The time isn't right. It's a bad environment. Everything Kerry says is a lie. Don't believe him. Do nothing and waste away your life until you're dead in the ground. Accomplish nothing. 
have no fulfillment or happiness. Be like me. You should avoid them as though they have the plague because there is no shot to cure you. Gary Boyd contributes five Canadian dollars. Thank you, Gary. What about writing out contracts? Technibble.com. You can get a whole computer business kit with every contract you could possibly imagine. It's already done for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. That computer business toolkit's around 100 bucks. It's going to have invoices, contracts, everything you could possibly need. Over 100 different documents are available for you to customize to your local laws and to your personal preferences whatever you want your warranty to be, whatever you want your conditions to be, all you gotta do is modify what's already been written. If you wanna make sure it's legal, you'll have to contact a local attorney familiar with your local, state, and city laws, and you're good to go. But when you're dealing on Craigslist and you're just starting out, you don't need any of that. You absolutely do not need that when you start out. It's like you're asking me how much tires are gonna cost and you don't even own a car yet. Get your car. When you actually have a problem, that you need a, you know, you know, sincerely, you're having an issue right now, I'm here to help you. But I'm not here to deal with your anxieties and unjustifiable fears that you are using as justification to not get started. These are excuses. They're nothing more but excuses. They're fears, they're anxiety, and they're paralyzing you. So until you get off your butt and do something and actually have an issue you need help with, it's just your imagination. You have nothing to base it on. So for anybody watching, do not let questions like that throw you. There are nothing anybody starting out needs, in my opinion. You're unlikely to get anything, any, you're unlikely to get any business from anybody that's worth so much money that you're gonna need a contract. And if you do, you're one lucky person. Maybe you should buy a lottery ticket. You are your biggest obstacle to your own success. I will say it again and again and again, and it will be demonstrated even after I've said it numerous times. You see peop some people just don't get it. Some people absolutely will fight to defend their ignorance. They will put more effort into doing that instead of into actually getting up and doing something. Be aware of it. Don't try and change them, but for God's sake, don't become one of them. Because once you do, it's a hard road back, as you can witness in the chat room. They're very hard to help people like that. They've been in there so long, it's hard to pull them out. And if they don't have the wherewithal to pull themselves out, they'll probably be that way for the rest of their lives. And that's their choice. There's nothing wrong with it if they don't think there's anything wrong with it. Me personally, I couldn't live my life like that. I just, I just couldn't do it. I will fight and fight and fight until my very last breath. I will never give up. Christopher G says, I keep spilling wine in my laptops. <laughs> well, that's an easy problem, Christopher. Uh, switch to hard liquor. You won't get wine in your laptop anymore. Rodney wants to know, Carrie, what do you suggest per hour for noobs? Whatever you're worth. Whatever it takes to get the job that you're willing to accept. When you're just starting out, you need the work. More important than the work or the money, you need the experience. You might even do a few jobs. I wouldn't do them for free. Never, ever listen to me. This is really important. This may be the most important piece of advice I'm ever going to give you. You're ever going to hear from anybody. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm, I'm on the right camera because this is the most important thing that you're going to hear on this stream right now. Never work for free because what you're doing 
is you're telling people you have no value. And do you know what people think of trash? They throw it away. Now, you can disagree with a customer on what your value is, but you have value. And the minute that you value yourself at zero, nobody else is going to value you. You have just, did, you've just hung yourself with your own rope. You have set a precedent that you will never ever be able to overcome with that specific customer because now they're used to you working for free and that's what they expect from now on. You never ever work for free. Never. If you do that, the only person you're hurting is you because now you'll be working for gratitude and you'll find you're not going to get it a lot of times. And quite the opposite, people will still complain. They will devalue you because you devalued yourself. So how much should you charge? I don't know. But don't do it for free. It will take you a long time to succeed. Ron S. contributes $20. He says, bring down video card prices, Carrie. Yeah, I wish I could. Tony Waller with 99 cents. Thank you, Tony. Rick Lakes with 20 bucks. Thank you, Rick. Good to see you. Good to see Rick here again. Russ, uh, Rudy Guajardo contributes $5. Thanks, Rudy. And Peter Romano with $10. Kerry, make your own GPU. John Yasuda, there he is. He says, great job, my friend. Tell it like it is. You're always a great teacher. John contributes 20 bucks. Tony Wallow again with 99 cents. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate your support. Listen, there's more to life than gaming. There's things that are more important than graphics cards because you want to sit around and entertain yourself all day. Let me tell you something about gaming that you may not have heard before. Hold on. This one's going to be a while. If you ask me what I do for a living, I will tell you I game for a living. You might go, what are you talking about? I've not seen you game. Do you know why I don't read instruction manuals? Do you know why I insist on doing things the hard way and trying to figure it out on my own? That's my game. I love figuring stuff out. I don't like it when people tell me Here's how to do it, Carrie. Unless I ask, I don't want you to tell me. That's like you playing a game and somebody tells you how to get to the next level or how to get past the dragon or the boss. They've ruined the game. It's like sitting in a movie of, of a, a, a murder mystery and the person sitting next to you says, oh, that person did it. They've ruined the entire movie for you. But here's the difference. When you sit at home for hours on end playing a video game that you paid 50 or $60 for, and you spend hours and hours and hours at the challenge of figuring it out, that's a job. That is work. It is work you're not getting paid for. You're paying somebody else to do work. And somehow in your twisted psychosis, you think that wasting your life away on a digital screen over something that makes no difference in the real world is accomplishing something and you're paying for it. And yet, with a simple perspective change, you could be making tens of thousands of dollars overnight by simply gaming in a different game. My favorite game on the Xbox is how to fix the Xbox. It's always different, it's always challenging, and it's always rewarding. I love that game, and I get paid. I don't pay to play that game. That is one of the most fun games I've ever played. How to Fix the Red Ring of Death on an Xbox 360 is a game I've never gotten bored of and, and has practically paid for my car. So if you want to pay money to work for free, great. I hope GPU prices become affordable for you. For the rest of us, if you're serious and you want to make money and you want to have a great time and be fulfilled like gaming, but you're actually helping people, and you're actually making a difference in the world, and you're going to have a life so much better 
that you won't want a game anymore because every hour you spend playing those games, you're losing money. And suddenly, the game's not as fun. Suddenly you think, oh my gosh, am I wasting away my life? Why do you assume you're going to be here tomorrow? Why do you think that? You may not be. I may not be. Tomorrow is guaranteed for none of us. Whatever it is you're going to do later, later may never come. And when you get around to it, if you get around to it, you won't have many years left to enjoy your success. I was in the grocery store the other day, and this little old lady was buying a lottery ticket. She was probably in her 70s, and she said, oh boy, I hope I win. And perhaps it was a little rude, and perhaps I should have kept my mouth shut, but I said, well, that would figure that you'd win when you're in the uh, you know, final years of your life, right? That you will have struggled your whole life to make ends meet, and right towards the end, you win the lottery. Wouldn't that be a big middle finger from God? <laughs> Just so your ancestors could have it? And she kind of looked at me, and I, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't... I didn't mean to imply you're going to die anytime soon, but I'm just saying, isn't that Murphy's Law? Why couldn't you have won the lottery 40 years ago instead of struggling your whole life that, you know, you, you maybe have 30 years left at best. So even if you won, you'd have a very limited time to enjoy it. And you're not fully mobile and able to do all the things perhaps you might have done as far as travel and things like that that you would have if you were younger, but all of your kids and grandkids, well, they'll have it made. <laughs> I'm so dark sometimes, and I didn't mean anything by it. I was trying to back it up. I was trying to correct it. And I didn't elaborate it to that detail, but I was just like, you know, Murphy's Law, right? You'll win it right towards the end of your life after you spent the majority of it struggling. That was mostly what I was trying to get at. And, uh, you know, every day matters. And the, the sooner you get something accomplished, the longer you have to enjoy that accomplishment, regardless of how much time you have left or I have left or somebody else. We're all not on the same clock here, okay? Some of us are going to perish before others, but we will all perish. And none of us know when, and we never will know. That is something you can never know. So, what are you doing today? Are you ready? Or... Are you just going to rest on your laurels and say, mediocrity is good enough for me? That's your choice. It's your life. And what you want to do with it is nothing wrong with sitting around and accomplishing nothing. If that's what you want to do, that's probably right for you. But for the rest of us who feel like you're being held back, I'm telling you, you're the only one holding yourself back. Whatever excuse you have, it's always on you. And when you fix you, the world opens up of opportunities. A couple other contributions have come in, so let me give a couple more shouts out here to these generous folks. We've got uh, Madi Yoel again with $5. He says, you are 100% right. Katrina Ireland contributes $5, said, just loving your channel, Keep it up because it's valuable and real. Absolutely. Thank you. Rick Hubbard with five pounds. As always, thank you, Rick, for your continued generosity. Chris McGraw says, failure is the best teacher in experience. You gain is valuable as long as we try hard to overcome and achieve success. The pay is the reward, and you get for your sum total of experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Marco says, I am oozing wisdom. I hope I don't get any on you. John Williams says, thanks again for the coupon code at CDK Deals. You are the best. Hey, I'm glad to save you guys money and make sure you're getting real legitimate products. Richard says, many people game all day and trade opinions at night. Hey, that's their right. If that's how they want to squander their precious time on earth and not realize the unlikely statistical uh, reality of their even existing in this universe, it's just a form of delusion and denial and just a lack of self-awareness 
and, and they will be towards the end of their life in the blink of an eye and they will look back on it and they'll say, how did I get here? All that stuff I was going to do, how did 50 years go by so quickly? More importantly, helping people is extraordinarily addictive. It will pull you out of depression. It will reward you financially. It will give you more financial freedom. You will be able to have a better life. But it won't happen unless you make it happen. Some people say, I wasn't born with that talent. I got news for you. Very few people are born with any talent. When I was born, I couldn't walk. I could not speak. I couldn't even go to the bathroom on my own. I just went in my pants. I was a complete idiot with no natural talent. But over the years, I learned to walk upright. I learned to use the toilet and not go to the bathroom in my pants. I even learned how to feed myself and speak and read English, even writing it and in cursive. And then somewhere, somewhere around my 20s, I got this adult disease that children typically don't get. And it's, why bother trying? It's this whole attitude of risk analysis with a negative outcome. So why bother? There's a fear of failure. There's a fear of criticism. So if I sit and do nothing, I'm safe. You're not safe. You're rotting away and wasting and squandering your precious time and your precious life. You have devalued yourself. Nobody else has done that to you. You've done it to yourself. But the good news is you just have to change your attitude. The world is waiting for you. And if you die, the world will go on without you. Whether or not you choose to jump on board or let it pass you by, there's nobody holding you back but you. And there has never been a better time. You want to sit around and game all day and have anxiety about graphics card prices? Go right ahead. The rest of us, we're selling graphics cards and making a ton of money. What would you rather have? Money or a graphics card? If you could have one or the other, which would you rather have? You can't have both. I'm not saying you can never have both. I'm just saying in this hypothetical situation, if you could have a graphics card or you can have money, more money than you can spend, but you can never use it to buy a graphics card, which would you rather have? And what are you doing to achieve either of those goals? Simple question. Are you waiting for somebody to do it for you? You must be rich. In which case, you don't need any advice from me. You should tell me what I can do to get rich so I can be more like you. But the world is waiting for you. Opportunities are waiting for you. If you choose not to see them, you need to adjust your vision. Again, I'm just looking through the chat to see what sort of feedback. I, I, I'm identifying the, the people who are very, very outspoken about arguing for their ignorance and arguing for their limitations, and they just don't have self-awareness. But the rest of us, I want you to look at it. Scroll through that chat room. I'm not going to name names, but look at it. That is a disease and it's contagious and there's no cure for it other than what I'm telling you.
you have to do it yourself. If you don't, you will stay sick your whole life and die that way. These are like demons. And you will battle these demons or you will die with these demons. But the only person ultimately it's hurting is you. You are capable of amazing success if you would just believe in yourself. Take a little bit of risk. Don't go crazy. Do something. And if you run into a situation, we're here to help you. You bit off more than you can chew on a computer repair and you need help. We can guide you. But the idea that you're afraid that you might, so therefore you don't even try, that's illness. Nobody can help you. Nobody can help you. You have to get it moving. If you get it moving, and in the process of moving, you get stuck, we can help unstick you. But we cannot get you moving. You have to do that. I don't, I don't want to hear anybody feeling sorry for themselves about their situation. That's on you. When you decide you're done with it and you really mean it, you'll start moving. And while you're moving, if there's any issue where you got lost or you're stuck, we are here to help you. We're not here to help you with your anxieties and your worries and your imagination of what is possible or what could be. I'm not interested in what could be. It's a waste of time. You tell me what is. And you'll get help. We will not abandon you. Don Parada contributes $4.99. He says, I'm paying my dues. Also, you know how tech enthusiasts have conventions like CES. Is there anything similar for techs you attend? Or could you take us to via a press pass? So right now, Dom, with the pandemic, a lot of stuff is not happening. However, uh, TechCon Unplugged is happening. Uh, I'm glad you asked your question because it's actually coming up in, it's, in, it, it's near Chicago. TechCon, T-E-C-H-C-O-N, Unplugged, Dot com is taking place September 17th through 19th. It's uh, just outside of Chicago, I think, or right in the Chicago area. There is no better convention for self-employed computer techs and small computer MSPs than TechCon Unplugged. It has no peer. The next thing up from that would be uh, Channel Con from CompTIA, which says it's for businesses of all sizes, but when you go there as a small business, you'll realize you're a minority among multi million dollar businesses everywhere. And even though they say it, it's for everybody, it's really not. You'll meet some fantastic people there. You might even meet some great vendors that you can do business with, but they'll all probably be larger than you by a scale of 100 to 1,000. TechCon Unplugged is the only con uh, convention I know of that uh, strictly is for self-employed computer technicians or small computer tech businesses. And it's available to everybody September 17th through 19th. I put the link in the chat room. I won't be going this year because it's in Chicago. Um, but last year... It was canceled because of the pandemic. The year before, it was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I went. If it was in Grand Rapids again, I would go. Unfortunately, um, that's about the time of year that I am in Grand Rapids every year for vacation. And since I'm there for vacation anyway, I attend the convention. I don't go specifically for the convention. And I think they're going to bounce it back and forth. I think it'll be Chicago one year Grand Rapids the next year. The problem is I'm not going to drive all the way to Grand Rapids, turn around and drive four, five, six hours back down to Chicago for a day, then turn around and drive back up to Grand Rapids, and then turn around and drive 29 hours back to Phoenix. It's just not going to happen. It's too much. I love the guys. Everybody who goes, I know the majority of people there. They're real, genuine, hardworking, hardcore computer techs that have the same problems we all have, and they share their knowledge, and we help each other. And they have vendors who specialize in working with small businesses that don't have big orders. It is the perfect convention for small IT business owners. There's just nothing like it. 
So thank you for asking. I'm glad you did, because uh, there, there's no better convention I've been to in that regard. There's just no peer to it. Tech Con Unplugged. And you'll meet the most amazing people that you will relate to because they do the same job that you're doing. They have the same problems you have, and they probably have suggestions on how they overcame some obstacles you may be having trouble with. They also tell stories of inspiration, and they share their story of how they got started. And uh, there's a number of panels. Check out the website. You'll see what all the panels are, see who all the vendors are. Um, it, 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 I, I cannot say enough good stuff, and it's cheap. It's like 200 bucks that covers food for, it's like Friday, Friday night, and then Saturday and Sunday, and then they have like a get-together uh, last time it was at a Dave and Buster's and they bought food for everybody and gave you like 50 bucks to spend on arcade games or some ridiculous thing on a card. Maybe it was 20 bucks. I can't remember, but it was all in. Let me put it to you this way. I spent 200 bucks for the ticket and I got about $400 in stuff. I'm not sure how that works, but it just the friendships. You know, to see my friends like Mike Smith and to see, uh, and to make new friends. They're, they're, we all share a very common and relatable experience, which is something that attracts people to be friends. And uh, you won't be bored. There's so many panels going on and you probably will be like me and, and wish you could be at two panels at the same time. I hope they will film them and put them on YouTube after the event. I don't know. Kind of sad I'm not going, but there's just no way I'm going to be able to backtrack six hours and then forward track six hours and then backtrack six hours and then forward track six hours and then drive back 29 hours. It's just not going to happen. But I do hope they have it back in Grand Rapids next year. I don't know if they will. and I don't know where it'll be, but if it's in Chicago again, I will be back in Grand Rapids, so I'll be right back in the same situation. But I support what they do, and I've been waiting for a convention like this. Like, why is it taking this long? And it's all thanks to the people who make it happen, which is John Dubinsky, uh, Paco LeBron, and Jeff Hallish. And you, you will recognize those names if you listen to a podcast called Podnuts, or what has now be, um, spun off to there's still pod nuts and some of those people have left and created their own pod podcast for managed service providers called msp unplugged msp unplugged.com and that's for managed service providing advice so these are great resources if you want to start your own computer repair business they'll give you great advice and it's all free the convention costs money to attend but the podcasts are completely free. TechNibble is a wonderful resource based out of Australia. If you search my YouTube channel for the word Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E, you'll see my interview with Bryce Witte, who flew out from Australia for ChannelCon back in Chicago, back in, was it 2015, 2016 I was there? And I've known Bryce for years, but I never met him in person. That's about a 14-hour airplane ride from Australia. So I seized the opportunity, grabbed him, kidnapped him into my hotel room and forced an interrogation on him. And then I set him free. And that video is here on the channel. And the information he has is priceless. And there's lots of others I'm not mentioning because their names aren't on the top of my head. No offense to anybody. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I don't have a script and this is all unrehearsed. So I'm just going off the names that are, for whatever reason, um, on, on the top of my memory, but I know if I go and I look it up, there's a number of people I'm going to kick myself later for not mentioning that are also great resources, like Matthew Rodella. Matthew Rodella does amazing work in marketing. If I need marketing advice, I go to Matthew Rodella. Website design, Matthew Rodella. I don't know anybody who's as good as what he does specifically for technical work, to acquire technical work, and to inspire and motivate people and their customers. 
to generate more revenue. So it's names like that I'm forgetting. Terry Zanders contributes two bucks. He says, just for being so entertaining, check PayPal. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, oh, speaking of PayPal, I had a really generous contribution yesterday after the show. I didn't see it till after the show. And, um, well, the person, if they're not watching, they'll, they won't know that I'm shouting them out. Um, $25 comes from Terry. Hey, Terry, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Was there a note? Well, basically the same thing you said in the chat. Appreciate that. Um, yesterday, Joseph Mahoney sent an Amazon gift card. So, Joseph, uh, I wanted to say thank you uh, for your generosity and support of the show. I wasn't quite sure what we were going to do for tomorrow's show because uh, I don't have the part I need for Mitch and I to continue the beast build. Uh, ironically, I'll get it tomorrow. Unfortunately, we'll already be live by the time the part will show up. So that'll be postponed till following Friday. Mitch and I will always do a show on Friday. So tomorrow, because of the generosity of, of uh, Ryan in Nevada, he sent a couple of motherboards. And I've got a AMD Ryzen 5700G. And so tomorrow, Mitch and I are going to prep that board. We're not going to install it in a case, but we're going to do a build of getting the CPU, the cooler, the RAM, the storage, make sure the BIOS is updated. Ryan said he already updated it, but it could be another update. We'll just double check. We'll get Windows 10 installed, updated, activated, optimized, and then it's ready to go into a case with a power supply and be shipped out. That one will be made available for sale. It will be sold at what the parts value are. Uh, the reason for that is I don't want to be taken advantage of. I don't want to sell a computer for $300 that's worth $900 in parts only to have the person I sell it to sell it for $900 and make the money off the system because I was a nice guy. I'm not going to do that because I'm not an idiot. Remember I said don't work for free. If you work for me for free, what's to stop me from pretending I have a computer problem and I need it fixed, you fix it for free, and, and you find out, how are you gonna feel when you find out that was never my computer, that was a customer's computer or somebody else's computer and I just billed them $60 and you just did the work for free and I just put $60 in my pocket. And the person I help thinks, you're so wonderful, you did such a good job. And I go, thank you, that's called outsourcing. Do you want to be outsourced for free so somebody can make money off of you? So when I'm giving away computers to generous contributors, I don't care what they do with the computers. They can sell them. I don't care. Those generous contributors have more than paid for any machine I'm sending to them. But if I'm selling a computer, I'm not gouging on labor. In fact, I'm not charging anything for labor. And in most cases, on these machines I have here that have been built on video that don't have a home, just to inspire somebody to buy it, I'll cover the $100 shipping fee or $130 shipping, depending on how far east. Because everybody in New York and Florida wants a computer from me. <laughs> Nobody in California or Colorado. <laughs> Seemingly, it's pretty rare. I think I have three people who've ordered a computer from me in the state of Texas and 30 people who've ordered a computer from me in New York. So that's Murphy's Law, you know. So the shipping costs more the further it has to go but I will sell the computers for what the parts cost. So if you want to know how much does Kerry want for a computer, all you've got to do is look at the parts list and add it to your cart in Amazon. Whatever that total is, that's what I'm asking for. No labor. And in most cases, if I'm hungry enough to sell the system, I'll just throw the shipping in. So basically, I'm going to lose about two to $300 in labor and shipping by doing that. And I feel that's generous enough for complete strangers on the internet. But for the contributors, the people who've contributed a lot over time, I want to make sure that I give them a good computer 
And if they want to resell it or they want to take it apart, I don't care. It's theirs. They've, they've paid for it. That's a, what I call a return on their investment. It's their dividend. And so folks like Lou Greenia, folks like Ryan in Nevada, folks like Mortmont, they've got computers coming to them with no conditions. I don't care. But just so you understand the business of giveaways, there's a business to that too. Don't do anything for free. If you do something for free, don't make it a regular thing. I like giving away the veterans' computers, and it costs me money every time I do it. I will go out of business if I do it too much. On the other hand, if I never do it, uh, it doesn't sit well with me because I'm able to afford that through the community's generosity, and I turn around and put that back to the community. But the worst thing that you will experience are people who feel entitled to free. That is one of the most disgusting exhibits of human behavior I can ever describe apart from murder. The entitlement that somebody feels they deserve something that's done nothing for you or anybody you know, but somehow you're responsible and you owe them something, turns my stomach. But when I do give away a computer to somebody who is grateful, when I'm, you know, I'm not talking about the generous contributors. I'm talking about people who don't show up in this chat room unless there's a free computer being offered. And then they pitch their story about, you know, how, how it would benefit them and how badly they need it. And then you never hear from them again. Or they say they want to take it apart and upgrade it. And you're just like, you know, there's a reason why they don't have a computer when they exhibit that behavior. Because they probably took apart the one they had and broke it. Now, you just set them one, and they're already talking about taking it apart. Well, you know, that's what happens when you give stuff away. Don't expect people to actually cherish it and take care of it. There's probably a reason why they don't have one. Because, again, they probably made some unwise decision and tried to make whatever they had better and completely destroyed it, and now they're begging for a computer. I have seen that over and over and over again, and it turns my stomach. And I'm like, well, you know, now I know why you didn't have a computer. Now, I'm not saying they always break them, but the fact that they even attempt it when they have nothing to fall back on, if you've got so little that you can't, you don't even have a computer, the last thing you should be doing is taking apart the one you get for free. Because if you make a mistake, you're done. You won't get a second one from me. There's too many other people waiting for help who will appreciate it and not a, uh, break their machines. But... It is their machine. When I give it to them, it's theirs. If they want to smash it with a hammer, if they want to poke around in there with a screwdriver, go right ahead. And, and, and if they make it better, that's wonderful. It's theirs. I don't care. But it does, it does uh, dishearten me that it's not cherished by some people. And that's okay. I'm accustomed to that now. I know what to expect. I don't give away as much as often, and I'm much more, um, I, I do more due diligence over who's going to get a computer now. And um, every once in a while, I still get someone who's ripping it apart. They email me and tell me how they took it apart and made it better. Okay. You know, they were so destitute, they had no computer, but somehow they found the money to buy more RAM or to expand what I sent them. It just doesn't make sense to me. If you had that kind of money, you should have been able to step aside and let somebody else who would have benefited more. But uh, that's an error in my judgment. However, that's their computer. I want to reiterate, once it's given away, it's theirs to do with whatever they want. And if they want to take it apart to make it better and they succeed, or they fail, it's not my consequence either way. Brandon said, what's your thoughts on Windows 11? Uh, my thoughts are that uh, I'm not aware of Windows 11 doing anything that I can't already do on Windows 10. So, uh, Windows 11 is not a finished product. 
and we don't know what it can do and what it can't do or what its restrictions are going to be. We know rumors, and I can't understand why anybody would want Windows 11 unless Windows 11 has some return on investment that would make it worthwhile to have it. In other words, if I can do something in Windows 11 that I need to do that I cannot do in Windows 10, or if Windows 11 can do it more efficiently, making me more productive. But because Windows 11 isn't a finished product, it's like asking me what I think of the 2027 Mustang. It doesn't exist. It may be in development, but it's going to change a lot between now and when it is released to the public. So it seems like a waste of human brain power to speculate over what possibly might be over rumors on the internet, over something you have no control over that offers you no benefit whatsoever. That's my opinion on Windows 11. Now, when Windows 11 actually is released to the public, if you'd like to know my opinion, I'll be glad to give it to you. But right now, you're asking me about a product that is unfinished and is likely going to change a lot before it is released to the public. And what those changes are going to be are not within my control or your control and your opinion is, in my opinion, is completely of no interest to anybody and makes no difference in the world and it is a complete waste of your time to even consider it. That's my opinion. I would rather worry about what is today, now. Everybody's so busy looking at the anxiety of tomorrow, you're not living for today. So I have no interest in discussing products that do not exist. When the product exists and is available to the public, I will then be able to accurately gauge its value. And that's for everything. Anything else is a waste of time. Whatever experience you have in an unfinished, unreleased operating system that is in beta form may be completely a different product when it is released to the public. Whatever it is you think you like or not like about Windows 11, it is not necessarily what is going to be in the final product. You can go to a car show and you can see the 2027 Mustang concept car. And when the 2027 Mustang concept car comes out, it will not look like the concept car. Watch the movie Rampage where they drive the 2021 Ford Bronco in 2018 or 2019. That does not look like the Ford Bronco that was released to the public. So any speculation regarding the value of something that is not released to the public in a final format is a complete and utter waste of your time. It is not conclusive. It does not accomplish anything and it is completely dis, um, misleading because you're making an assumption that that's going to be included in the final release. You don't know that. You have no control over it. So opinions on it are irrelevant and pointless. They have no impact on what that product will be when it's finally released. And that's the only opinion that matters. I'll look again through the comments if there's any other questions regarding being a computer technician, if there's questions about or comments about arguing for your limitations, I'll be sure to point those out and make sure that you're aware that you need to take a long, hard look in the mirror and realize that's your problem that only you can solve. And I will say it over and over and over again to each individual who keeps exhibiting that behavior. Um, I'd like to see you succeed. I'd like to see you be happy. I'd like to see you add something of value to your community by helping others and seeing you profit from it, feel the fulfillment within, you'll be happier. You won't struggle. 
Financially is bad. Anything that you earn will be more than you would have earned had you not undertaken this task. You will feel more self-confident. You will have more value for yourself. You will begin to believe in yourself. Nobody, you know, very few of us are born with a talent. The way people become talented is by doing it over and over, practicing, working at it. I've never met anybody who could sit down at a piano and play Beethoven. Never met them. But I have met people that have played piano for years, and they're pretty good. And the people I've met that have played piano for decades, or guitar, or drums, baseball, when you do it for decades, you go, wow, well, that person's talented. That person worked to achieve their level of skill. You have to decide what you want your talent to be. So if you like something, like if you like working on computers, then the more you do that, the more talent you will have. Nobody can hand it to you. You will never get it from YouTube or Google any more than you can get muscles. You're not going to lose weight or gain muscles by watching videos. Maybe you can be inspired, but you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to commit yourself to it and not for a week, not for a month but for the rest of your life, for the foreseeable future. And the sooner you get started, the sooner you'll become successful. It's really that easy. Any excuses are just that. It means you really don't believe in yourself, and I cannot help you. You must take those steps. You must pull yourself out and start to move. If you move in the wrong direction, if you get stuck, we're here to help you. But we're only here to help over real situations, not hypothetical ones. Those are poisoning you. Your fear is causing you to miss out on more opportunities. And you're completely unaware of it. Opportunities are whizzing by you and you are oblivious to it. Anthony says, what's your favorite part about being a tech? My favorite part about being a tech is when somebody says, thank you. I, I, you, you, you saved my business. You know, you, you, it's, it's the same feeling I imagine a fireman gets putting out a fire before it destroys a building. You know, you've, you've severely limited the amount of damage and I can get back up and running sooner and nobody died, all right? That's a bit extreme. Being a tech typically doesn't have that level of a fireman, but I imagine that feeling is very similar where somebody exhibits such gratitude that there's no words to describe their appreciation. And then they give you a check or cash, you know? How does it life get any better than that? I've seen people in near tears you know, they lost their pictures of their vacation and I was able to recover them. And it was pretty easy work. And they were just emotionally I don't I don't know how much of being a computer technician involves being a psychologist, but there's a lot of psychology involved in the personal nature of a computer. It is a personal computer, a PC. It's very personal. And for some people, 
when that computer fails, it's like a part of them has failed. And it's like you're able to get them to use their legs again. So grateful. And that's my favorite part. My favorite part is the appreciation. And it's also the part that annoys me the most when I don't get it. That's why I hate entitlement. I hate it. I don't owe you or anybody else a damn thing. Remember that. I don't owe you anything. So anything I offer is out of my generosity. And the only appropriate words are thank you or you can leave. That's it. You do not have a right to complain, to criticize. I don't owe you anything. So that gets under my skin. So they're both related, the thing that makes me the happiest and the thing that makes me the angriest. It's the same thing. Anthony says this year he's donated about 100 computers and laptops for free for the less fortunate, and I've seen people cry because they're so grateful. And to me, that's thanks enough. Uh, exactly, Anthony. Uh, that's why I do it. It's a very selfish reason. It feels great. Michael Dane here in the chat room has given away computer number 62 and 63 to members in his community that are, uh, you know, and, and the last two, they were needing computers for their children to learn remotely, and they could not afford them. So these aren't random strangers. These are members of his own community. And when you help members of your own community that you know face-to-face, -face, they're not con artists or scammers, it's not fly guy 23 on the internet. It's an actual person that you've known. That's genuinely where you get the most appreciation. You typically don't get the entitlement from people you know. So again, if anybody has any questions about running a computer repair business, any concerns, this will be the time to ask. What I'd like to do next is I would like to re-air. It's about a two-hour interview with Corey Fruitman as we go through every detail of using Instant House Call, from downloading and installing it to going through all the little bells and whistles that no other remote software has. Now, there is remote management software, RMM software, that would be the closest thing to Instant House Call, but that's a lot more money and it's really if you're trying to manage automatically hundreds of clients and there's just one of you and you need automation. So instant house call is really for that tech that's working in a very small business just getting started. You need something more than remote access. You need something you can brand. You need something that's not complicated for the end user to download and install. And it's got to have built-in tools so you're not having to download all these other utilities to solve your customer's problem or to figure out how much RAM or CPU or temps, that's all built in. And there's, as far as I know, Instant House Call is the only remote support tool made for computer technicians. So before I start the interview, I'm gonna give you one last opportunity. If you have any uh, computer technician related questions, business related questions, I'll do my best to provide you the appropriate answer. I'm sort of going to wait here just a minute because of the delay from when I speak to when you hear me. Once I start the interview up, I'll be shutting off my microphone and I'm going to allow that interview to play. And I hope you'll stick around and see just how powerful that tool is and why it's not just a remote tool. It's a remote repair tool and why if you want to start a business as a technician, getting the business having that remote repair tool and then knowing how to use it so you can solve your customer's problem are the only three things you need to start making money and becoming a computer technician right now. It's all, the, the rest of everything is up to you. I am serving you the food, but if you can't be bothered to reach over and chew it, you're going to starve. 
Ryan contributes $5. He says, thanks for all you do. I'm glad you found a good use for one of those motherboards. And I can't wait to see your review of the TP-Link router I sent. Ah, that is, okay, so Ryan is the one who sent those boards I showed off yesterday. Ryan sent the, uh, well, the board we're going to use tomorrow. I actually wasn't sure if I was even uh, going to have Mitch here tomorrow because I didn't know that I had anything for him to do. And Ryan has saved the day. Ryan also sent me a pair of Edifer uh, bookshelf speakers that I wanted to use for the studio, and they're crap. <laughs> so I have not reviewed them yet. And I don't use them in the studio. They're not very good speakers. They look and feel like they're good speakers, but they're not good. And I'll, I, I do intend to get around to that, Ryan, and I appreciate that you sent those, of course. And um, I don't know yet what I'm going to do with the other motherboard because it, it needs an older chip. But I did notice somebody on eBay was selling a bunch of those boards, the, the 370s. Is that you? Because they, they were out of Las Vegas. They had like 10 of those boards available for sale, brand new in a box. And they had sold two. So apparently they had 12. They wanted a reasonable price for a brand new. I'm just kind of curious if that might be you on eBay. Aaron Computer Tech wants to know what minimum liability insurance do you recommend for a small computer repair shop? That would not be a question to ask me. I don't own a small computer repair shop. I don't have a retail space. But uh, you probably want to talk to somebody who does, and I think TechNibble would be a great resource for you. TechNibble.com So, Ryan, that is you on, on uh, eBay selling the boards? I just, yeah, I thought, you know, the price was fair. And I noticed that it was coming out of Las Vegas. And I thought, sounds seems like something Ryan might do. Fernando Prieto contributes $2. He says, cool beard. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm trying. It's a little weak on the cheeks there. <laughs> Looks more like a goatee. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I shave it off. I don't know yet. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. Um, that Ryan says, yeah, you found my eBay store. Well, you're not a gouger. Um, the price on the board, I think, was 129 or 130 and he wanted 19.99 to ship it. Sometimes people on eBay play this game where they undercharge for the product and overcharge for the shipping. I thought it was a great deal, considering it's not a used product. It's brand new in a box. And um, I commend your integrity on eBay. It looked like you had a lot of, like, 4,800, if I remember, um, feedback. So you're certainly not new at it. And it looks like you charge a fair price and fair shipping. And I commend you for that. Wizard Rat says, where are your links for PayPal and Amazon gift cards? Pretty much in any video, but this one, uh, actually, is it in this video? I, can't, I think it is in this video. You should be able to click on the show notes, the video notes on the video. They're pretty much in every video I ever do. Yeah. Matt Power says the Dollar Shave Club sells razors. Yeah, I think Gillette bought the Dollar Shave Club, so I think it's now the Dollars Shave Club. Razors are such a ripoff. It's like 
ink on an inkjet printer. Patrick Grusaw has a link to my Amazon shop. Of course, that's not where you can buy a gift card or send PayPal. You can always go paypal.me, paypal.me, me, paypal.me forward slash Carrie Holzman. That'll also work if you don't know how to read the show notes. Um, and uh, Amazon, you could just send a gift card. You just go to the gift card section and uh, put my email address in there. It's in the about page on my YouTube channel here. You can see my email address that way. And I appreciate any support, any anything at all, uh, any any sort of appreciation, even if it's just a thank you. It means a lot to me because if I have 58 million views, I might have 2 million thank yous, maybe at the most. So percentage-wise, I don't hear it very often, and it makes it that much more special when I do. A thank you again to Ryan Grady, who sent the motherboard that will be the content for tomorrow's show. Without Ryan sending that, I don't know what would have happened tomorrow. So Ryan just saved the day. So if you would, please say thank you to Ryan. Well, he's in the chat and can see it. He has given a lot over the last couple of years, and he, does, he has not gotten the recognition that he deserves. Please, please, if you have a moment while he's in the chat, please tell him thank you. Because again, without him, I don't know what tomorrow's content would have been. It may not even have been a show. With that, I would like for you to watch this interview that I have done with the founder of Instant House Call. And we're going to go through every feature of the software so you can understand why it's so special and so valuable to somebody who wants to fix computers, especially if you're just starting out. And with that, here we go. You're going to see a title roll. That's not the end of the show. That's the beginning of the interview. Hello and welcome into my latest vlog. Today is September the 6th, 2018, and sitting to my left, which is your right, just so you know that, this is Corey Fruitman. He's the founder and owner of a remote access software called Instant House Call. He joins me here in the kitchen all the way from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, eh? Thank you for having me. <laughs> and um, I've known Corey for some time. He's a great guy and it's uh, it's, I'm a big promoter, uh, and it might be biased, of small business. I don't like faceless, soulless corporations. If I can avoid dealing with them, I prefer uh, dealing with small business owners where there is a face uh, and, and uh, more gratitude and, in my experience, better customer service. And there are obviously uh, other remote access applications that are, uh, you know, have multi-million dollar marketing budgets. And sometimes it's the, it's the little guy that tries harder and gives you best value. And I believe that's the case here with Instant House Call. So Corey's going to explain to us how Instant House Call works, what all the benefits, features, and costs are involved. And by the end of this, you will understand what remote access is, if you don't already, as well as how to download and use Instant House Call. The idea behind remote access how would you explain it to somebody who doesn't know? It, the idea behind it is to let you view and control a computer from far away. So um, there are different types of remote access, and we can get into those. But in a nutshell, they are on-demand, unattended, and time window. Those are the three sort of types of remote access. Um, and the idea behind them is, is to let you, in the case of instant house call, typically fix someone's computer remotely. So essentially, you're taking control of the keyboard and mouse and seeing their screen. Exactly. And to the user, the end user, the reaction I often get is, oh, it's like you're, there's a ghost in my computer. And my mouse <laughs> is moving, and things are clicking, and they're often fascinated by it. Right. Now, this is also a technique scammers use when they tell you you get a random phone call or an email or sometimes a pop-up on your screen that says mm -hmm. your computer's infected, and they want access to your computer. But I have never experienced these scammers using instant house calls. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> um, they always use some of the more uh, ubiquitous uh, remote software. 
and they don't seem to do anything to prevent it. Are you guys doing something to prevent or discourage scammers from utilizing the free trial to scam people? Absolutely. There. So there is, there's quite a bit that's actually baked into the software to discourage that. So uh, for starters, you can't start a session um, or be in a session at all uh, without, without some um, notifications to the customers happening. So the customer can always see that you are connected to the computer. The customer can always disconnect you from the computer with a click of a mouse. Um, and the um, the way the way the features are built. So the uh, an example I've given before is um, file transfer. The way file transfer works is it's very transparent to the end user that you are doing the file transfer. So for example, uh, some remote support scammers will steal social security numbers or um, driver's licenses, any identity theft stuff. They'll do that with file transfer on some uh, remote tools. You can do that with a, a window where you're transferring files back and forth in the background. Instant house call, it's all in the foreground so people can see what's going on. Well, let me ask you this. I've noticed uh, with other remote access software, you can fight over the mouse. Mm -hmm. Does Instant House Call give priority of ownership of the cursor to the end, u the end user or the tech, or is it is it the same battle for control over the mouse? You'll get that same. You will get that same battle for control. Uh, so, so when you say that the end user can end the session at any time, mm -hmm. how can they if they're fighting the mouse? Because they they're they're able to. There's a hotkey. Uh, so Shift F10 will actually uh, automatically. I assume that's on the screen to tell the user that. Or the, it is. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. And then you said there were three types of remote access. You said there was on demand. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming that is uh, customer calls you mm -hmm. and says, uh, "Can you help me?" And you've never connected to them before, and they need to download the software. Right. Right. You as a tech, you or as the person who helps. You would say, go to this website, download the software, and then what happens? Go, go, to, go to the site, download the software, a UI pops up, a user interface pops up with a, a start session button. They click start session, and then they're connected to you. There's, that, that's it. There's no password or no. code? No, no keys, how, no codes, no pens. How do I, as the technician, how do the, how does... How does Instant House Call know these two people want to connect or know each other? What will happen is in that user interface, it's going to show the name of the technician. So it'll say, Kerry Holzman, um, essentially, do you want to connect to him? Start session. How does it know that? That's, uh, there's some secret sauce in the software that does that. We're going to get into that. We're going to demo demonstrate because <laughs> there's a piece here I'm missing that I want to figure out. Um, There are some questions in the chat. We're not going to address that right now. Um, the, the, the goal of this interview for me is to understand and, uh, and learn how to utilize not only Instant House Call, but what it's capable of, not necessarily to compare it against other remote access products. I personally think they're all about the same. I think they all pretty much do the same thing. Their interfaces are a little different. And I, maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm oversimplifying. but. I don't want to play a game of comparison like this is what this one does and this is what we're here to talk about you and your application and everything okay. it can do. And then at, towards the end, if there's gaps or anything, if you guys want to ask questions, we'll do a quick Q&A at the end. Does that sound okay? Sure. That's what that works. Okay. And um, so unattended. Uh, that, okay, so on demand, and then you said there's unattended. Unattended, yeah. So that's my thing. I right. know unattended. Right. I generally, I don't like to work on customers' computers that I've never seen in real life in person. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm working with. So when I have uh, worked on a customer's cl a client's computer on site, I will put the remote access software configured as part of what I do. So I don't have to make another trip in the future. I know the condition of the machine. Right. That's just me. That's my policy. And then I can connect to the machine at any point, at any time. I don't need any permissions. I instruct my customers that have me on retainer to always leave their computers on 24-7. And that enables me to log into their computers remotely late at night when I'm up and it's quiet and I don't interfere with their productivity. And they're not asking me a million questions interfering with my productivity. Uh, that's my preference. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of trust involved in that. You just don't want to be handing out on demand. Um, Unattended. Unattended access, thank you, uh, to anybody. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want to give remote access to just anybody. Right. Uh, oftentimes, though, 
the remote access products will say, never give this PIN number out to someone unless you trust them. Nobody, I guess, takes that seriously or mm -hmm. they don't. They assume the person that's instructing them is trustworthy, even mm -hmm. though they've never met. It's a random phone call. People a little too trusting these days. Uh, and then you said there was a third option. You said it was called time window. So I'm a, from the sound of that, it's unattended in a certain time? It's sort of, it's, it's, it's a hybrid between on-demand and unattended. So the way it works is, say you're not available right now, um, but because you're doing this broadcast, but somebody needs to get a hold of you, um, they'll click start session. It'll say, Carrie's not available. Would you like to wait for him to sign in? Then they say, I'm, I'll wait 90 minutes, for example. They type 90. And then you've got a 90-minute time window in which you can access their computer. So this would be more like for a, uh, a business that uh, a client needs you, and the, this is a client's way of telling you, I need help. It's the client's way of telling you I need help, yeah, and there, there's actually a bunch of stuff that goes with it. So it, it can send you an SMS letting you know that your customer is, being, that your customer is waiting for you. Um, it can send you an email, obviously, and um, it, it's, it, it's an easy way for your customers to get a hold of you without having to schedule an appointment. I, I, like, the, I like the sound of that. I like that a lot. The less I have to deal with people, the <laughs> better. Um, Present company excluded, of course. Of course. Now, uh, gosh, I've got a million questions and my brain is just going a million miles a, m a minute. Cost. A lot of my customers think remote access doesn't cost anything. Right. right? This is a, a very difficult uh, topic to discuss. For me, I'm a terrible salesman. But not only is my time worth something, but the remote access software at least what I need to rely on and what I'm going to charge people for cannot be free. There's a lot of uh, legalities if you're profiting from using a free piece of software and you're not sharing uh, some royalty or dividend from the income you generated from the use of that free software. Geek Squad got in trouble with this quite a while back. Mm. And there's also no accountability or support in free software, which as a business owner, I must have that. Right. Ooh, it's a little discouraging to me how much remote access costs. And I think this is where Instant House Call shines. And I, I know a lot of people want to save this to the end, but I think it's an important thing to bring up front mm -hmm. because it's affordable. It is affordable. And so let's define that. It starts at $29 a month. Now, competition says they also have monthly, but it's really annual and they've broken it down. Right. <laughs> So is yours actually, can I buy one month? You can actually buy one month. Unbelievable. So you get a discount for buying the year in advance, or Perfect. you can pay month to month hey, the way Whenever you buy in bulk, you get a discount, right? Absolutely. Right. I do the same thing with my customers on retainer. They can pay me by the hour, or you can give me 10 hours right now at a discounted rate. Right. Right. That is the right way to go. My joke is, how many do I have to buy in order to get it for free? <laughs> when does the discount? When do you start paying me? How much do I have to get? Um, I would like to let the product speak for itself and demonstrate how the product works. Okay. We've got two computers. I've got this laptop here in front of me. There's a desktop off to the side. Uh, because you're familiar with the product, you'll be the tech, I'll be the customer. Okay. We're video, we've got the, the video capture card here is connected into both machines. Um, and we're going to be doing some toggling back and forth, I think. Yeah, I mean, I could put them, there. if I put them side by side, we're going to have big black bars across the top and bottom. It'll be really difficult to mm -hmm. see what's going on. So I think we'll need to switch back and forth just so we have a full screen. The viewers can see a full screen of each side. Okay. This is a Windows 7 computer. You have a Windows 10 computer. This shows interoperability is fine. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, this software is compatible with what operating systems? Uh, Mac and Windows. And on the Windows side, there is um, a desktop app and a modern app, which I know you love the modern app. Um, so it's a desktop app and a program. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know what? It's the same program. It's the exact same it's program. Just the interface is slightly exactly. different. Exactly. So exactly. you have like a, so like a, a the, the the app is is what they called a tile back in Windows 8, right? That was right. the tile, right? Which we still have in Windows 10, right? And then the program. What did you call the program? Um, 
what was your word? Desktop app. The desktop app then is literally what it says. It's an app on the desktop, right. not a tile on right. on the, uh, they had a word for that too, the Metro interface. I'm aging myself right now. I know they don't call that any, anymore. Okay. Let's go to the website. Let's take a look at Instant House Call. Let's see how we download it. Let's install it. Okay. And let's make a connection and show everybody how it's done. And then we can go through the bells, whistles, and features of what you can do once you have that connection. Sure. All right. So um, I, I, why don't we, yeah, let, let's go to the website. I'll show you where to download the trial from. I've already got the software installed on this computer. You're, you're, no, you don't. Okay, I don't? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I set everything, everything okay. up clean. Okay. But in theory, yes. As a tech, you would already have it installed. Right, exactly. But if you're a tech, see, I don't know if my viewers are the techs mm. or the end users. Okay. So I want them to see both sides of it. Okay. And uh, and the difference in the install. Okay. So let's start with you, because okay. you have to have it first. Okay, perfect. Right? I mean, yep. I can't connect without you. Right. So I'm going to switch over to your computer, which uh, wiggle your mouse, I think it's just sleeping. There you go. Okay. And then, I'm sorry guys, I have to kind of block our chat room so we can see here. And, um, okay, I can see. So instanthousecall.com is where you went to. And you're scrolling down. Hold on, you're going a little quick here for me. So there, see the Windows app is on the left and the classic desktop app is on the right. What do you prefer? I, 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 I'm, I'm uh, nonpartisan. I'm happy. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with both. You're of happy with both. There, there, there are things that I like. I, 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 the, the modern app has a more modern interface. It's got a nicer, prettier interface. Okay. The desktop app is a very simple, basic interface. Classic. Uh, classic. Yeah, and that's exactly what it says, actually. Oh. Um, it's a more classic interface. So if, it, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for bells and bobbles, then the, um, the, the modern app is going to probably satisfy you a little but bit more. But they have the same bells and bobbles, it, don't they? In terms, in terms of uh, features and functionality, exactly the same. It's just the way it's displayed. Exactly. Okay. I, I, I will say that the, the desktop app is more popular than the modern app, um, but I, I think they're both really good. So we're just going through a basic install. We're just clicking next, 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 install. Click yes, are you sure? And the install is a pretty small download. It looked like it was pretty quick. It's pretty quick, yep. And what do we have here? Oh, okay. if you're a new user or you already have that's pretty standard stuff. So I already have an account, but let's just take a quick look at get a free account. Okay. Okay, and this is where you would sign up for, um, for a free trial. And you would just fill out these forms um, and then activate your free trial. You get 15 days free unlimited use um, of everything. And you get, you get access to all of the features as well. Great. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. It's all pretty standard industry stuff here. <laughs> nothing, nothing unusual, which is good. All right. So I'm going to sign in with an account that I've all made right. previously. When you sign in, I want to make some adjustments over here. Will you do that? I want to find, I can put us on screen. There we are. Look at that. Oh, wow. We're high tech over here. <laughs> And then once you sign in, you'll see this little toast notification pop up saying, saying that you signed in uh -huh. and a little system tray icon uh, down here. Okay, let you know the app is running. It lets you know the app is running and has some, has some features and functionality. When, when, I, when one of my customers does the uh, time window, mm -hmm. I assume like a, some kind of pop-up appears down there or the uh, system icon changes? Somewhere? So a time, uh, for a time window, you're going to be signed out. And, and then um, oh. you're, that, that's, you're saying, I'm not available to take a call. And when you're not so available... You, so if you're not available, you wouldn't just leave the software running? You wouldn't leave the software running. You would sign out. Um, okay. and, and then when you're signed out, it'll... it'll, it'll I, I guess I'm thinking of Skype where you can be like away. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So that's how that... So that's all you do, right? That's all you do. So I'm signed in now, ready to accept a call. I can sit back and wait for my customers okay. to contact me. Hold on. Okay. I am going to switch over to my computer. I'm going to switch over to my computer any minute now. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right this minute. Something strange is happening. Give me just a second here. Um, I, my software, for some reason, is not obeying me. There it goes. I don't know why that... It switches both of these for some reason. All right, well, we'll... 
I know, I know a way to fix this. I know a way to fix this. I just, sorry guys, I thought I was prepared and here I am. Uh, I want to make sure that I have this configured properly. Oh, that's why it did it. I understand now. Okay, so we're going to turn off that one. So that's me. That's you. We good? Okay, good. All right, that's me. That's him. But I lost my cam. Why did I lose my cam? Oh. That's why. Okay, all right, now we're ready to roll. Okay. Little, little live configuration here. This is nice. a live video, ladies and gentlemen. Everything you see is real, it's authentic, and it's genuine. Um, everything I show you comes from the perspective of a real professional IT technician. I am not like the big popular YouTube tech channels where they are hobbyists and enthusiasts who often do things that no corporation would ever pay you to do as a working tech. So if you're thinking about becoming a technician, and you're watching those big popular YouTube tech channels, they are entertaining and they're interesting, but uh, quite often the things that they do are something that no company would ever pay you to do as a tech. Remote access software is something that you will love as a technician. It saves you time. Your customers also like that because it's faster to help them and cheaper as a result. And, um, and that's what I like to demonstrate on my YouTube tech channel is what I deal with on a daily basis actually doing work versus having fun. Although, it is fun too though, for <laughs> me. Okay, so I, I, I need help, Corey. Uh, what do I, I, I need help, can you help me? And you say? I say there, so depending on the situation. So if I have a website, uh, which most techs do, then they would put an instant house call link on their website for a direct download. Because we're doing this as a demo, you're gonna use what's called a support portal. So open up a browser and go to demo dot instanthousecall.com. Okay. I'm gonna, does it matter what browser I use? No, any browser or demo dot instanthousecall dot. Oops, I hate these touchpads. Instanthousecall.com. Click download. Now, would this be? like your company's own website. I noticed like a, there's a phone number that says zero, 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 zero. Yes. So this is a demo. If you were a, a technician, you would set this up to be, the, wouldn't say instant house call, it would say Carrie's computer fix. Exactly. My phone number. Exactly. And then that download would be customized to me. Exactly. And that's how instant house call knows to connect us together without any IDs. It's, it's customized all the way down to the file name. So when you click that, when you click download, you'll say, in this case, I'll say instant house call Inc in the file name. Um, but that would say carryholzman.msi. Or whatever um, I named it. Or whatever you named it. Uh, okay, so it's 11 megs, that's easy. I like that. Thank you for not making bloatware. <laughs> Let's get it installed. This is an older computer. This is a real, real world demo. <laughs> so I, th I think it went into the background there. Ah. Yes, it did. I'm just going to go next, 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 next. Or not. Let's see. I didn't do anything. It didn't ask me. That's cool. That's it. I like it when the end user doesn't have to ask me a million questions. Should I? What do I click now? Okay, so this comes up. Okay. We're using Instant House Call 6.3. How long has Instant House Call been around? 10 years. Get out of here. I know. It's, I, I can't believe it myself. And you don't come out with a new version every year just to... <laughs> Should, shouldn't you be on version 10.3? I know exactly what you're referring to. Okay, okay so uh, so you actually only come out with new versions when you need to. It's uh, not just a money grab. Something like that. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So actually, ju just to be clear, new versions are included with uh, with with every. There, there's none of none of this. You have to pay to upgrade to the next version. What? We retain backward compatibility. How are you still in business? And uh, new versions are free. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know what? I can add us to this. On subscription. Let me, let me add us here. Let's go to another video capture. Let's go to camera one. Is it camera one? That's not camera one. Give me just a second. I want to add camera one. Where's my camera one? Is that it? 
that's not it. Sorry, those of you watch, watching live, I am trying to configure something here on the fly. Look at that. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Okay, now, what do I do? Okay, now, go ahead and click Start Session. So I don't have to worry about options, any of those tabs. I, I'm just end user. I don't know nothing as those, far as this stuff those tabs, Those tabs are useful for different things, um, but for a basic session with a basic customer, they don't have to worry about them. Just click Start Session. Okay, Start Session. Okay, now, what happens on your side when I do that? I don't see, oh, incoming call. And you can accept or decline it. Yep. see. So you click accept, and there's my desktop right there. Okay. Uh, normally with remote access, wallpaper goes away. Yes, and that is no exception here. And you can explain why? Yeah, I can. So wallpaper can have pictures of your dog, pictures of your kid, whatever it is. It's wasted bandwidth, right? And so sending that data over can slow things down. Why bother? And so we strip out the wallpaper, we put it back at the end of the session. And it's also a, a great way for it, an end user to know when their wallpaper's missing, somebody's connected to you. Right. Right? Exactly. And sometimes the wallpaper colors can interfere with the ability to see the icons on the screen. I don't know what people are thinking yep. sometimes, but okay. So now we've connected. You have control of my keyboard and my mouse right now. And so here is the, the disconnect button that we were talking about, and here's the chat button. Um, so if, if is that text channel or can you do voice chat? Just that's just text. Okay. And can I look at my uh, web? Can I look at the webcam of the person? I'm, can I spy on them? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> good. Um, well, that's a really good thing. I, I'm, uh, there's I, there's some features I see in other remote access that I don't quite understand and that's one of them. Right. It just seems like there was no useful purpose, but I don't know. Okay, so... Uh, now, if I can, I, I actually want to point out a, a few things about the branding of the software. Because um, there is brand, a, a bunch of branding that uh, we just sort of passed by uh, that I want to talk about really quickly. Yes, please. So here, this is the desktop icon and I was, I was doing a, a test, so it says my icon text and it has a picture of a doctor. You can change that icon to be anything you want it to be. Um, so if you want it to have a carry sign or a big dollar sign and then change the text on it, you can change the text on it to whatever you like. A miniature blue screen of death. And it also appears down here. So that, that same, that okay, same icon will, okay, will, will, good. will appear there. The splash screen when you first ran Instant House Call on the customer side, that can have your logo on it. And the start session screen where there was a blue banner along the bottom, I'm not sure if you recall, um, along the bottom there was a blue banner uh, that can be customized to say uh, to, to look like whatever you want as well and we can see I'll show you actually what it looks like um, the blue banner so this is the customer side oh that, I that, see that's the blue and banner. that would I, I, how hard is that to make one of those I mean do I have to be a Photoshop expert or no you can you can do it in MS paint which uh, I can handle a mess paint. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just create, create, create one of those banners and you can make it look like whatever you want. And your company name, of course, will always show at the top. Your company name also shows here where it says Instant House Call Inc. That would show your company name. And obviously, it would show your name here. Mm -hmm. um, so every, everything is customized and branded for you. Make sense? Yeah. I, I, uh, me likey. Okay, so obviously at this point you've got control of my mouse and keyboard. You can do everything I can do with my mouse and keyboard. But what about bringing up Task Manager or rebooting in safe mode? Are these options for like virus removal and stuff? Or um, yeah, you just they, did they that. are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Task Task Manager, obviously. I'm, I'm what I am going to show you is um, uh, that it can go through UAC. So. Uh, some remote tools out there. That's right. Sometimes they, they, the, the screen just doesn't show me anything and I've got to instruct the end user to click yes for me. Exactly. Okay. So that's not the case here. Instant House Call goes through UAC, no problem. UAC is user account control? Correct. And that's that confirmation dialog box that on some remote programs doesn't for security reasons. Right. But unfortunately, most end users don't know whether or not to click yes or no. That's what they called you for. Right. I, I, I don't get why they do that. So, okay, well, I'm glad that you guys uh, show those. It's very frustrating. Now, you've gone into the connection tab. 
Let's talk about every option here. Okay. So send control to delete to remote is pretty self-explanatory. It sends control to delete to the remote computer. So I've done that here. Um, and nice. It, and then again, you can handle. Th you can you can work through the um, through the the dialogues there. Um, reconnect after reboot is a bit of an interesting one because, and that's the one that you were asking about. So there, you can do a standard reboot, uh, so just a regular, regular plain old reboot. You can reboot into safe mode, and you safe mode with networking, I guess, is what it would be. It, it is, yes. And then uh, you can also force an emergency reboot. What's different? So it, uh, on, there, there, there are times where you have a particularly nasty virus mm -hmm. um, that won't let you reboot the computer, or won't let you do a lot of things, including sometimes move the mouse type on the keyboard, that sort of thing. Uh, forcing emergency reboot basically says to the operating system, this is critical, we need to reboot now, and, it, and Windows does everything it can in order to, to do the reboot. Force close apps and re yeah, restart. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I very much don't want to have my, I don't want to have to tell my end user to click on anything for me. Right. What happens if, if an end user has a login password? Is there any way to catch, say, could you put your password in for me and it'll cache it so I don't have to keep asking them to do it every time we reboot? No. And that, so I that, will have to actually, ask it's by, it's by design to not, to not keep passwords inside the software. Uh, it's too much of a security risk. If somebody gets access to your account, they have access to God knows how many passwords. Well, so there's a plus and minus to this, right? You can see it from both sides. Absolutely. If, I, if, if the user tells me their password, I can say, look, I'll work on this when you go to bed. In the morning when you wake up, it'll be done. What's your password? Because I'm going to need to reboot this countless times throughout the night. Or the software can cache it, at least for the session. Or, so, right? so I would rather you put it into a password manager, a piece of software that's designed to hold passwords securely. Um, and then there's actually a feature specific to this. Oh, like a ballet? Um, and so that, that allows you to, it's right here, paste, uh, paste clipboard uh, to login screen. So, oh. so that allows you to take it from, from your password manager and then paste, paste it to the login screen. Interesting solution to that. Yeah. Uh, refresh screen. I kept noticing when the scammers would connect to me remotely, they constantly refresh my screen. Mm. How come? I don't know. Why do you have it? Uh, because every now and then something gets missed and, and then a, an icon looks a little bit wonky so people can refresh the screen. Okay. What else you got? Request unattended access. This is your favorite. So if you want to ask your customer for unattended access, now notice it's not, it's, you don't automatically get to take unattended access. You have to request it. Do, do you mind if I show you how this works? Let me bring the other, let me bring my screen up. It'll be small, but let me bring that up so we can see both sides at the same time. Sure. Because you said it, it, it there's another remote access program mm -hmm. that asks the user for permission for file transfer, and then I can click yes. Right. 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 And you just said user account control passes through. Right. I'm going to assume this doesn't pass through. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, let's watch that. Hold on a second. Let me add um, another video capture device to our screen. Give me just a second, folks. I will have it here in just a second. Um, that's not it. This has got to be it right here. Okay, and then let me just minimize this. Not minimize it, let me resize it. This is going to get really interesting. <laughs> uh, where can I put it where it's not going to block our view? Let's just let's just do it like this. I'll try my best. If it gets in the way, let me know, and I'll we'll kind of cover up cover us up a little bit. Right, we want to see you typing, and then that way you can see everything's tied together uh, between um, right the screens. Okay, so you want to request access? What happens now? So you'll notice down here it says remote suspended, waiting for customer. How long will it wait? Uh, right here, I think it's 60 seconds. I, I can't quite see yeah, on the screen. You know what, I gotta make the screen big again. No, I can, we can just check on here. Oh, I suppose I could just look at my screen. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so 60 seconds. Okay. Um, but you'll notice that I'm not able to click this. I, can't, I cannot click yes. It needs to be the customer who allows ah, the unattended access. Very good. So I come over here and I click yes, what does that do? That gives me unattended access. I mean, what do I see to confirm? Oh, 
your contact specialist. So you can fill that out, but you just can't confirm it. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Obviously, if you've been given permission, you shouldn't need the end user. The, the idea is to take as much burden off the end user as possible. So I see what you've done there. There we go, and that's done. So now you're actually, you are in my unattended access list. So there's, uh, what does that look like, the unattended access list? Is that like a chat window that shows you who's online? Now let me see if I can figure out which computer is which. Here we go. <laughs> it does get confusing. <laughs> unattended access list looks like this. And there's Carrie Holzman. Look at that. Okay, great. Let's go back to the top of the screen. So file, connection, what else, what's next on the list? Um, request remote control. So if I'm in view only mode, I can ask the customer for remote control. Um, accept payment, this is an interesting one, where if you have, say, PayPal, or we can integrate with pretty much anybody, um, you, can get, you can get paid through the app. So you would you click accept payment, say I want $50, and then you're going to click OK. I'm not currently um, integrated, so it's not going to do anything. But it, it would um, take you to a PayPal page, which would say remote services, $50. Please pay me now. I like how you've got the calculator right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes it, it does take some math, depending on what you're doing for the customer. What's a conference call? Conference call is if you have more than one technician on your account, you can, you can bring multiple technicians in to help a customer or escalate. Simultaneously? Somewhere. Simultaneously. So it's not just like transferring to another tech? You, you can do both. You can transfer to another tech or you can have two techs working on the computer at the same time. In fact, you can have up to, up to 10 techs. How does anybody get control of the mouse? Working? That's a very good question. They have to arrange it between themselves. <laughs> It's choreography. Where it's typically used is so there are some larger remote support shops. They'll have a salesperson tier and a tech, a tech tier. The salesperson will connect first, and then they'll, they'll pass it off to a tech. That's the most common. I would, I would imagine the techs are going to be talking to each other. Yes. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, um, all right. So that covers the connection tab. On the file tab, enable remote printing. That's an interesting. And there's your file transfer, chat. Record session video, that's important for training purposes and also for evidence, I suppose, of uh, work completed. Yep. Save screenshot, um, I suppose you could do that within Windows, but I, this is just making it a step easier. Exactly. And uh, when you save screenshot, does it just automatically save the file? So it's not like Windows where you've got to paste it into an, like paint and then save it, it, it using it, the snipping tool. Or... It'll ask you where you want to save the file, but yeah, it'll, it'll, okay. it'll automatically save the file. Notes profile and history, I assume that is associated with that specific customer. So a tech just jumping in for the first time could see the previous history and notes of this customer's uh, history. <laughs> yes. Past work that's been done. So if I say removed a virus, so th this is a brief description of what we've done. So I removed virus, and it was the name of virus. Virut, V-I-R-U-T. Virus removed using super tool, et cetera. OK. OK, and then that is going to go into a log, and it also shows your customer what you said. I see that on the small screen there. Okay, well obviously everything we're going to see on the small screen below us is what you're seeing on your window within your windows, but I want to just prove this to my audience <laughs> that there's no magic here. Okay, now everything we've seen so far, uh, I don't see, uh, oh wait, what's that? Oh, that's just customer contact info. Customer tab and then private notes. So if you want to say nasty things about your customer, this is where you do or it. Or you want to store the customer's login password. They trust you yep. and it's always the same and you connect after hours and you can't remember what it is because you've got a million customers. That's where it goes. Okay. Uh, is it secure? Or, I'm just one tech, so I'm the only one that's going to look at it. But if you were in an office, that may or may not be a good idea. Um, I mean, if, if you were a, a, in an office of many techs, right. that may not be a good uh, practice. but. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for. Absolutely. OK. Uh, this is a log of the sessions, and uh, I suppose the amount of time spent on the session? Yep. You, you, you will, once, once this session is ended, then the ended will get a, a timestamp, and you'll be able to take a look and go back and do your billing if you need to. There's also um, 
uh, reports that you can pull in the administrator control panel um, that allow you to figure that stuff out as well. And they have the duration specifically in them. Now, basic, a lot of the, one of the things I don't like about free software is when the product is free, you are the product. Mm -hmm. And it's often limited, there's no support, there's no help, and it's very limited in what you can do. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons uh, a tech needs to connect to a customer uh, requires utilizing tools to perhaps uh, determine the assets of the machine, what's the processor, what's the RAM, what's the hard drive status, how full is it, clearing out temp files, removing viruses, and then you have to do all that by hand. Right. But I understand, I've heard through word of mouth, mm -hmm. yours specifically, mm -hmm. that these tools are built in to Instant House Call? Yeah, so Instant House Call has uh, what's called auto PC repair. Um, so some folks might know it as D7. Um, and that has a lot of those tools built into the software. So this this will take you know maybe up to, up to a minute to run. Um, it's just configuring right now. Okay. Um, and that that has all the reports and tools and stuff built in in order to get the diagnostics going on on your customer's computer to automate your repairs and to simplify things a great deal. But you but out of the box, does it do anything or do I as the tech do I configure it to do basically scripting? I want to run this and I want to run that combination of the two. So there's some built-in apps, there's some apps that, that it comes with generically, um, and then you can add your own apps to it um, afterwards. So there it goes. Um, so you, you, can add, you can add your own apps. And I should mention also that your branding, the, the branding that we were talking about that you configure, also move, comes over to this as well, because your customer is going to be able to see what we're doing right here. Checking Windows activation. Checking event logs. Oh, look at this. So in a nutshell. Holy moly. It, if, you, um, if you click on anything red, it will take you to, uh, so for example, there are device manager problems. It'll take you to the device manager problems and tell you exactly what's going on. Sony firmware extension. I can't read that. Parse device. <laughs> Parser device. Parser device. So there, there, there's, there, there's, there's an issue. I have an issue I don't even know. There you go. And, and that's what I hear that a lot from customers. <laughs> I, know, I tell that to customers. I go, did you know that this isn't working? And they go, no. And usually when I'm done, they're like, hey, it works a lot better now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so that anything saves some of the slew thing. It's, it's bringing it to me instead of me digging it. Exactly. For it. Exactly. OK, good. Exactly. Good. Now this is not, so basically this is D7 integrated in that instant house code. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So and D7 is a separate product, uh, but there's no added expense for this in it's instant house. It's included, all included for free. Awesome. Yeah. And it's a, it's a special version of D7 specifically made for instant house calls. So it has some, some tools that make sense uh, specifically for a, um, for, for a remote support session. So for example, if we say Google this, oh, <laughs> it opens up I love it. the browser on the technician's computer. Um, I love it because you don't want the customer watching you Google stuff. No, nobody wants the. Yeah. Nobody wants. No. Don't never show them how you make the hot dogs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. Does that make sense? Uh, it's brilliant. What just happened? I just uh, closed a tab. Oh. Okay. Um, there's a lot of information on the screen here. I'm sure when you get accustomed to it, your eyes will be automatically directed to this whatever is your technique. It's, I'm impressed with the amount of information. I like the very top. I see the RAM. I, I see the operating system. I see that it's 64-bit. I see how full the C drive is. This is all stuff I'm accustomed to doing manually. Right. This makes my, I, I do tend to do things the hard way. <laughs> I like controlled automation, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is information that I always want. Um, I don't know about DHCP. I guess you can see here that we are on open DNS. I recognize the 20867220222. I'm a nerd. I know that number like it's my girlfriend's phone number. I shouldn't say that I'm married now. <laughs> Shoot, I hope my wife doesn't watch this. Okay, so now... Um, 
uh, scrolling down here, on, uh, I'm sorry, on the left side, we've got report views, notes. Uh, what's that auto diagnose? Is that what it says? Audit. Audit, audit, audit to diagnose. What does that mean? So these are routines that you're able to run. And let's say I want to do an info report. I'm just making this up. Mm -hmm. Last activity view and web browser history. No, you don't want to look at that. And then I want to run <laughs> crystal disk info. Oh, look at that. And a bunch of other stuff that I can't quite see. So let's say I want to run all that stuff. I would click, I would click those off, and, yeah. I, and then I would click start auto mode. And it just executes that as a script. Top to bottom, left to right, it'll execute all of them as if it were a script. Nice. Malware removal, what's that? I see on the left side, back to the left, same, malware removal. Same type what's of idea. What's removing it? Oh, you pick what you want to remove you, it. You, you pick which tools you want to use. So it's kind of like, he's in, so it's almost like Nick Shaw, who, who's the D7 creator, has integrated Ninite into this or something. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and so then, um, and, and then what's, what's cool is if you have routines that you use frequently, you can add them to this drop down menu. So you can make your own. And you can make your own. Um, so let's say, I, let's say I've got one. Let's say I want to do none of this stuff. And I want yeah, I don't see the MC so Oh, yeah, it's in there. MC Soft. Uh, I don't see the emergency kit. And I click Save Profile. And anytime I want to use that same routine. Can I add apps that are, in, that are not in there? Yes, you can okay. in the in the custom app through config down here. Gotcha. Makes Anybody sense. familiar with D seven? I mean, this this is a different product, and you can learn more about D seven. I'm sure there are YouTube videos that cover it, and maybe I'll do one uh, with Nick Shaw about it. But I just like that this is integrated; it's at no additional cost. And if you're doing a lot of the same thing over and over again, and you get consistency. Because sometimes I forget: did I do that or did I not do right, it? Right, right. Especially when you, when you want to go through a bunch of stuff. Right. And if, if you're doing two at the same time, right? Did I did I do it on this one or did I do it on that one? So the automation through this is brilliant. Yeah. So same type of thing. You would click off the items that you want to do, and there's a bunch already checked. Um, or you can choose the profile from up here, and then click Start Auto Mode, um, and it'll go top to bottom, left to right. Nice. Are you a PC tech? Is this why you did this? I'm not a PC tech. This is why I bought it from someone else. So <laughs> you're a businessman. I am. OK. Well, as a PC tech, you're, you've got it right. It's, uh, it, it is a bane of my existence that uh, business people create products they themselves don't use. Mm -hmm. And then the people who use them struggle right. and wonder, why is it like this? Right. So you are a rare exception that you fully understand as though you de your life's income, you know, your, your, your quality of life dependent on it, as techs do. Mm. We rely on these tools. Mm -hmm. And it's very frustrating to us. Uh, when, when I say us, I'm speaking on behalf of all techs. I have their permission. <laughs> <laughs> when we utilize tools that we wonder, how would, why in the world, what were they thinking? And it's obviously that they don't use their own product. Right. So uh, this is great. Uh, this is a great integration. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. We'll continue down. We've got maintenance. What is maintenance on, below malware removal on the left? All right. Uh, a lot to talk about here. We'll just leave that on the screen for a minute. Let the viewers look through that. Below that, we've got Windows Repair. Let's take a look at that. We'll see what options exist here. Lots and lots of bells, whistles, and features. Um, windsock fixes that doesn't really happen so much anymore these days but this was a big big issue mm -hmm. for a while and it might be a big issue again mm -hmm. so I like that it's kept there let's go down to the next one outsource customize install oh customize uh, wow the screen is so little it's very hard to see uh, we are so for you guys you're kind of seeing what we're seeing there's a window in a window in a window and we're on a 40 inch screen but it's 10 feet away and or 8 feet away and it's Forgive us, and we're old and can't see. <laughs> we're here. I'm older than you, so don't worry about it. You're a young pup. Um, general, brand OS, what does that mean? Um, I, I believe it changes the splash screen, but to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Hmm. OK, that's more of a D7 question. Let's go to the next one down. Everybody, you know, the viewers can see all these options. We would spend 20 hours on this interview if we went through everything, right. guys. So we're just going to 
kind of do a quick overview here. This is QA and testing. So there's a stress utility, uh, a performance utility, browser tests, speed tests for the internet. Again, most of this stuff I do by hand. Mm -hmm. I, I like that it can be automated. I can do multiple things at the same time. What are tweaks? Wouldn't go down one. Tweaks, what do we have? Hidden, oh, okay, showing hidden files. Super hidden files, I don't know what that means. File extensions, taskbar balloon tips. Oh, we turn those on and off, that's nice. Load disk space checks, nice. Crash control, uh, great. And then below that, we've got the configuration, dcloud. What is dcloud? dcloud is something for customers of Nix who are also customers of mine. Um, so if they want to save their configuration instead of on the instant house call cloud, but on the dcloud, they can do that. OK, so if they're using D7 um, on site, for example. Yes, if okay. they're using it not through a remote session. So this only works through a remote session. Gotcha. And then. Uh, what does that bottom one say? Close with, uh, next one down? No, no, down on the left. The yeah, numbers. I'm closing the window. Oh. oh. Close with options, is that what it says? Yep. And then close and save reports. Right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and close out D7. I mean, this is uh, just one. This was just one menu item. <laughs> <laughs> we spent all this time talking about this one thing, and I want to keep moving. And that was all under auto PC repair? All under auto PC repair, yeah. So auto PC repair, there's two options. You can launch it right away, or you can create a restore point and launch it. Nice. That's really nice, because if you screw it up, you you've want got a safety to. net. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I assume help is just self-explanatory. Self, yeah, self-explanatory, self online help. And then this timer t tells you uh, how long you've been connected. Have we skipped anything? Um, we, we, haven't, we haven't covered things like file transfer. Um, so if you want to transfer a file, you right click on the file and you choose transfer to. That's easy. Piece of cake. And like I said, this is transparent to your customer. So you're, you can't transfer files without it in being transparent to your customer. Exactly. And if I were to transfer a file in the other direction, um, I can drag and drop it. Um, yeah, you can move that photo right there. That's the test results. So I can either, uh, is it okay if I open that on the remote machine? Absolutely, machine? yes. And that will display that to the uh, end user. And that displays it to the end user. Nice. Yeah. Quite useful. Makes sense? That absolutely makes sense. I like it when things make sense. Cool. Do you want me to show you how the time window, what the time window looks like? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm going to end the session, and there's a whole whack of uh, features in the end session uh, dialog. So we finished. I've helped you. You're good to go. I need to get paid. Well, I hate bringing this up to the customer. I assume that's this is all going to be part of that or no? The payment you can do during the session. So if we went here to connection accept payment. So that doesn't happen during the end it, session? It doesn't happen during the end session. So, no. all right, let's talk about what happens during the end session. Because okay. to me, it is, don't you just end after that? What else is there? Well, there's lots. Uh, so if you're not unattended, then you can remove the customer's software. Um, oh, so this, I like that. This becomes very handy when you've got paranoid customers. Will you do that for me so we can see? So, oh, so guys, just below us is my computer. This laptop right here is on the screen below. Uh, Corey is over here on a desktop off on the floor. I want to see what both sides look like when you do that. Okay, so I'm not able to do that because the customer has granted unattended access permission. Oh, that's right, we did. Yeah, so, so with unattended access, you can't remove the software until you until you get rid of the unattended access. Well, let's say, right? Let me get. Can I get? How do I get rid of the unattended access? Um, can I? Is it reversible? Yeah, I, I I can uh, I can get rid of it. So you're gonna. So we've closed the session. Now you're gonna reopen a session. Oh no! You don't even have to. You just delete. Just delete. You actually have an option to delete the. That's so cool. All right. So now you haven't removed the software. You've only removed the unattended access permission. Correct. All right. So now I can remove the software. Okay. And what else can you do? So we'll make sure that's checked. Yep. 
and then uh, open customer to, customer to, to customer's browser to a specific URL. So I could do like a monkey survey or survey monkey, whatever yep. that's called, that sort of thing. Surveymonkey.com. Monkey survey. Add session notes, so those notes that we were looking at before. Oh, so the customer can see them? So the customer can see them. Customer is a jerk. Oh, we should have checked that box. If you well, actually, sorry, if you want your customer to see them, you would say show them via browser. I didn't type an email address for you, so right. it, so that option is grayed out, which is good. Uh, but it, we can show it to them by by customer bro or by show, showing it through the customer browser. And then when I end the session, wait, wait, yeah. down below, I, there's a very important checkbox. Yep. I always use these settings so I don't have to keep doing the same darn thing yep. over and over because that would be inconsistent with the rest of the software, which automates everything else. <laughs> so I, I, you thought this through. Very good. Okay, I like it. And then you hit end session. Now, looking at the screen below, Corey and I in the upper right corner, we should start to see something happening. There it is. So, so again, this would be branded for you if you had branding. Um, I'm not sure how to point, but... Uh, right now, you can see on the bottom left-hand side of the customer I can, computer. I can go full screen on this for everybody to see it better. Okay. So where am I looking? Okay. So it says your remote support session is ended. We're moving remote, and so that's being. That's oh, it's being doing it right now. And you can see at the bottom left with the little highlighted installer. Uh, there it is. That it's it's in the midst of uh, removing the software. Yeah, that was just in the background because this came up after. There's the notes you typed in. There's the specialist name who did the work. There's the time and date of start, the starting the session, and then again ending the session. Exactly. And then there's your information, remote session confirmation, the name of the company, the phone number of the company. It's also here again. Um, it's good. I like it. So cool. how many millions of dollars is this? Uh, Twenty nine dollars a month. Or discounted. If you buy twenty nine dollars a month is the discounted rate. Okay. Uh, so it's twenty nine dollars a month. Um, if you buy how many months? If, if you if you buy twelve months, if you buy it by the One year. year. Okay. Uh, it's thirty nine dollars a month if you go month to month. Okay. And and then there are tiers above that as well. All right. Are there any bells, whistles, or features that we have not discussed that you would like to discuss? I think we've covered it. Th that's much faster than I thought it was going to be. There you go. I, I like simple, <laughs> but I also like that you can get more complicated. You can get more complex if you want to. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, I'm sorry, guys. We have not been paying attention to the chat. Let's do that now. If you have questions for Corey, please ask those questions now. I want to see if I've missed any any super chat contributions. Well, we've been, yes, uh, JHP Hawaii Photos contributed $5. He says, thank you for introducing an alternate remote software. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your contribution, JHP Hawaii Photo. Uh, that's my goal. I'm sure many people have never heard of Instant House Call before, and that's what I'm trying to do. I don't want to just keep uh, doing the same thing everybody else does. Uh, those other up, uh, a lot of big corporations have big multi-million dollar marketing budgets, as I said, um, and we're looking for something that has more value. Uh, let me ask you a question. It, it, well, if, if there's something that I want added, can I have it added? Is there any way that I yes. can say, Corey, can I have this feature? And I'm not asking you to change the software for everybody below. I'm wondering, is there features that have been added to Instant House Call as a result of somebody saying, can I have this? And I would say most features are, 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 are because people have asked for them. That's why it's very technician focused. Um, try and get that from the competition. That's all I'm saying. Just try. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I can't imagine you got a big support team. I, I imagine you do a lot of it yourself. I do a lot of the support myself. Where yeah. else are you going to get a piece of software? You get to talk to the guy who actually can manipulate and, and change the code to the software. I mean, you're not going to get that from competitors in this space. Not that I'm aware of. Right. You can open a support ticket, you're just another number, and you're handled by a, a oftentimes a script reading. Anyway, we'll get into it. but. Contribution come in 1999. That's come from Tim uh, Burchard. He says, "Hi, Carrie. Got to make up for." Uh, not okay. I've asked you. I always love watching your videos. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Tim. Um, I am so using Instant House Call. That's what Chisholm two says. Jitesh. Awesome software demonstration. Very customizable and professional. Not only that, it's a simple GUI graphical user interface. And it's user friendly. Overall, I grade Instant House Call software a 10 out of 10. Very kind, thank you. 
Freddy Tamidi says A plus plus. Good work software, very good to use. Uh, mean GR says that's a great discount on the year subscription. I, it's a lot cheaper than it's the cheapest I've heard of so far. Can you purchase this in the UK? Yes. <laughs> can you purchase it? Should we name every country one by one? <laughs> you can purchase it in any country in the world. Okay. Uh, Black Dog says hello to Kerry and Corey. Corey spells his name the same way as I do. Uh, just so you know, not that it matters. Thank you. Hello. Uh, just change the A for now. That's a great piece of software for Michael Holly. Wait, they're preaching to the choir. You guys. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> Looks like a great product. Uh, very good software. Love the controls and the securities. After being around 10 years, I, I, I think you've nailed it. I'm glad to hear it. That's but awesome. We, we haven't gone this in depth before. Mm -hmm. And the software has really evolved since the last time you and I talked. It has. Um, which was in Chicago in 2016, 15? 15, 15 or 16. Yeah. Uh, James Baker says hello to you. Greg, Greg M. I'm sorry? Greg M has asked that question. Is D7, is D7 included in all three versions of Instant House Call? So the, the answer to that is by default, no. But if you reach out to me and tell me that you're one of Carrie's viewers, then yes. How uh, would they reach it, out to you? Corey at instanthousecall.com. I'll tell you what, I'm going to type it in here. Corey at instanthousecall.com. There we go. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Corey at instant hose. You hoser. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a Canadian jab in there. Can I remove this other one? Yeah, good. Let's get that one. There. Oh, it's not letting me. All right, well, ignore that first one I did. I. I'm a very fast typoist. So yeah, so to, to, to answer the question, normally it's, it's included in the express and the professional, so uh, the middle tier and the top tier. Um, the Uno edition, which I think is the one he's probably asking about, is, um, doesn't typically include the D7 software, but again, for your, for your viewers, it will be included. I would imagine the Uno version is then a smaller, lighter, quicker download. Uh, yes. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Does it handle screen resolution changes? Yes, it does. That's a good question. Um, I noticed on other software it turns off blending mode. It really, I never know what that means. Do I check it? Do I uncheck <laughs> it? I, I didn't see that option in Instant. Is it just doing this stuff automatically? So it does I, everything automatically. Okay. Yeah. I, I see options like give full control. To, well, you should be giving me full control. That's why. But you do have a view only mode, right? There is a view only mode. So those, those That's options more for training. are available underneath the, um, it, it's for training or for people who are paranoid. There, there's some there's no good giving me remote access to fix something if you won't give me control to fix it. I'm with but you. if we're training, then I don't need, I don't need control. We, we, I just want to show you something. I'm with you. People want it. <laughs> All right. I, I, I want you to help me, but I want you to tie your hands behind your back. Now help me lift this table in right. the, into the next room. Here, I'll, I'll, let me show you what the table looks like. Yep. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, okay. It's there. You don't have to use it. <laughs> I know you can control MacBooks, but can the technician be using a MacBook? Is there software for Mac? So if I'm the tech and I'm a Mac tech, yep. can I connect to a Windows machine and work on it from a Mac or the, vice versa? The answer is yes. It's currently in beta. You can get it from instanthousecall.com, camel case, Specialist Mac Beta dot zip. You know what? Please do the honors and type that into the chat room for us, so that we. Uh, Oop! I, I lost. Uh, you're over here. Yeah. No, I know. I lost you. You clicked the mouse. And I, I'm not able to type. Oh, <laughs> that's my bad. All right. Uh, you're good there, right? So you just want to continue where you were, or do you want to go all the way back? Does it work when Windows is doing its update? Blue screen. What does that mean, blue screen? I'm assuming it's the. Um, uh, I'm assuming it's it, that he's referring to the screen where it says updating X percent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to see that, are you? Or yes, are you? you do. Yes, you do. That's right, because it does it does establish the network connection, and then it does the the. Standby will update your completing does. screen. It does, you, yeah. Yeah, okay. I wanted to see from start. We'll watch later again. You can rewind this video. We're in DVR mode, so right now you can drag your mouse backwards while we're live. The goat says thank you so much uh, to the goat. Uh, uh, you're welcome. 
Um, I do speak fluent goat. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Where'd you but, pick that uh, up? Um, I, 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 uh, I would tell you that I dated a sheep. <laughs> but that's just politically incorrect. <laughs> but it was funny and I, I had to go, I'm sorry, uh, anything for a joke. Uh, old school funk and soul says great software. Hey, listen, when old school funk and soul, you, you get approval from old school funk and, and soul, that's okay in my book. Absolutely. All right. Anybody have any questions for Corey? Just love the guy has a Sony Vial. No, that's my Sony Vial. That's not his. Can I be a beta tester? Um, do you run beta tests regularly, or is it with existing customers? So okay. So if you're an existing customer, then that's an option available to you. Is there a Wake Up LAN support? Uh, no, not at this time. I've never used Wake Up LAN ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. That is generally in use in house in large corporations by IT departments. Right. Um, uh, again, I usually encourage my customers to keep their computers on 24-7. Don't let them go to sleep. Don't let them hibernate. But go ahead and let the screen go to sleep. You know, you can adjust to turn your display off after a certain period of time. I usually set 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, computers sip power nowadays. Processors automatically, you know, rack down. And, and the power is really, it's just sipping the power. Harry Baldwin's contributed $2 to the channel. Harry, thank you for your support. Harry, have you had that laptop a long time? There is a story about this laptop I won't get into at this time, um, but this belonged to a now deceased customer of mine. Uh, Philip Moss, does it work if the user is using a VPN? Yes, it does. Does it have any issues with firewalls or routers? Nope, it's, uh, it, it works seamlessly through firewalls and routers. Just as we demonstrated, we yes. didn't do anything to my firewall. We just, we literally did it as you saw. There yeah. was no uh, preparation or conditioning. If there, there are some remote programs that are very limited, basically just giving you keyboard and mouse control, where you've got to know the IP address on the computer and you've got to po po <laughs> port forward the, you've got to know how to configure your router to do port forwarding and if the computer doesn't have a static IP, you have to do it all over again. So for many of you, I just spoke a different language and I apologize, but for those of you who know, you understand what I'm saying. That doesn't apply with this software. This just automates the whole thing. Um, does it work with screen readers? We do have a lot of visually impaired viewers. It's an excellent question. I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I, you know, different screen readers. Uh, JAWS, I think, is a very common one, or it used to be. Um, and, and how the version of them and how they work within the software is more on the screen reader than it is on you, as far as I know, than mm -hmm. it is on the app developer. Uh, Bill Pusey, Pusey says, I just sent you 50 bucks. I didn't get to add a message. Sorry, thank you for your help with my computer. Can't wait for it to arrive Saturday. Awesome, Bill. I, I, I again, um, Bill is the is the gentleman who had the bad reset button. It was an interesting diagnostic. If you haven't seen it, uh, click the videos. But you don't not yet. But when we're done here, if you're looking for more content, click my name and then click on videos, and you'll see a um, bunch of different videos. Uh, I expose scammers and how they work and how they uh, will exploit other remote access software products. Mm -hmm and uh, do everything I can to educate uh, the end user and to encourage common everyday folks to take back control of their computer and understand this is not magic. This is very simple stuff. Is this Linux compatible? Um, you can use it through Wine. You can use it through Wine. Windows, what is it, W-I-N-E-A. Windows, I can't remember what Wine stands for. Uh, can you install like Office? I don't know what he means. You can you can install software remotely, I guess, if you have the installation files. You could transfer the installation files as you would transfer any file and then install it. You can install the program like any other program on the client's computer for unattended access, just as we demonstrated, but you'd have to have the client give you access first. Is it a one-time install or you, can you use it on different machines? Well, I imagine if you are the end user, you would have to install it on each machine. And if you're the tech, you could install it on any machine and then the credentials that you use to log into. Right. So could it be, if, so if I have a license from you, mm -hmm. can I install it on multiple machines yes. simultaneously? Yes, you can or install it on per machine? as many computers as you want, uh, as a technician or as a customer. But are, so how is it limited by how many simultaneous connections? The number of simultaneous logins with a given email address. 
So as long as I'm not connecting, so if I've got 10 computers and I'm only using one of them at a time as the tech initiating the session, mm -hmm. that's one connection. Say that again? Yeah, that's just confusing. Okay, let's say, let's say I got my summer house, I got my winter house, I got my fall house, yeah. I got my spring house, yeah. and because and, I'm a really wealthy computer tech. Right. And I have different computers there. Yeah. And so I've installed Instant House Call so I can support my customers while I'm away at my different homes. Okay. But I always leave my computers on, and I'm always signed in to Instant House Call on all four, and I'm cheap, so I have the cheapest version of Instant House Call. Right. Will it prevent me from connecting to any of my clients that need help because I've signed in on all my other machines? You can only be signed in from one computer at any given time. What happens if I try to install? Will it make me have to drive home? No, no, it'll, it'll, it'll just it'll disconnect sign, me. Sign them out and then bring it back in. Good answer. There you was thought of this. there was a very good question um, that hit, touches on a feature a little bit upstairs, and I I can't remember the name of the person who, did, who asked. Let me it. scroll up. Oh, wine is not an emulator. That's what wine wine is. Recursive. So bird 203. Okay. Go ahead, read it. Asked, uh, Corey, does it work when the end user has no install rights on a company PC? Oh, a guest, not administrator. Fantastic question. The answer is yes. Uh, so there's, <laughs> there's software. If you go um, to one of our computers. Um, what do you want me to do? Go to a screen? Yeah, put, put, bring up a screen. Okay, perfect. And if I, hold on, let me make this big so you can see it. I oh, because it's not installing, it's only running. Is so right? not, not necessarily. The, so if you click on the download button here, yeah. it will not work. But if you click on having trouble, click here to download safe applet, the safe applet will run from temp. Um, and you can do that on computers that are not locked down. Nice, I think. It's good. I see a good side and a bad side. I, I, I we know. lock them down for a reason. I know. Speaking from the tech side. I know. If it's locked down, you need to talk to the person who locked it down, not to some stranger over the phone. Yeah. But there are occasions when mm -hmm. the guy who locked it down quit mm -hmm. <laughs> or is sick mm -hmm. or is unavailable mm -hmm. and you need someone else to help you. Right. Okay. So there you go. But at least when they reboot, it's gone. When they reboot, it's gone. Good. Very good. I don't think you could do, ask for a better balance than that. Otherwise, it's one side or the other side. It's, it's, it's no, yeah, it's, I think you've handled that well. Um, or can you serial port jump as guest host type intervention? Well, I think we've already answered it. Is there a free version? There's a 15-day trial. 15-day free trial. We don't, look guys, when there's a free version, you don't want the free version. Trust me, you don't want the free version. There's no support. Uh, a lot of times when companies offer you a free version, they're like a drug dealer. You know, your first couple of hits are free. <laughs> and it, you, you guys know companies have done this in the past, right? They get you to like really get addicted to their product and then they go, eh, no more free version anymore. So there is a free trial, and well, what do you say we give away a couple copies just to the sure. skepticist and the sure. All right, uh, let's do let's give away. Do, do we want oh, hmm. well, three licenses mm -hmm. for six months? Six months each. Sure. Fictions has just contributed twenty dollars. Norwegian twenty Norwegian krona. Coax on me, informative as always. Thank you, Fictions. Uh, Nick Poverman says, thanks, guys. Uh, let me just scroll up, see what we missed. Kerry, will you be using Instant House Call in your business? Absolutely. What I've been using angers me. Corey got to witness me screaming and yelling at it the other day, and he laughed just like he did just now because he's there going, you're such an idiot, Kerry. If you were using my product, you wouldn't have any of this issue, and I don't cost as much as they do, and I can do everything they can do and more, and I said, save it for the show. That's, that really happened. I'm just scrolling up to see if we missed any questions. I'm sorry, guys, you may have to retype your question if we missed it. 
Uh, we've got 429 people watching. Give us a shout out, if nothing else. Let us know where you are watching us from, please. This product works worldwide, is available worldwide. TeamViewer has a swap of the control where the customer can control the text computer. I would hope you do not have this feature. No, um, that's not an instant house call. What is an instant house call is the ability to view, uh, to show the customer their, their screen. So if you are doing some sort of a tutorial, you can actually reverse screen share, but you can't swap control the way you're describing. And that's a question from Rich Robbins. Thank you for the question, Rich. That's a good question. There are no bad questions, really. Corey, I think I found my product I want for my computer. Thanks, Corey. Uh, that's from Bird203. Glenn, Glenn Gregg is saying goodbye. Goodbye, Glenn. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, so I think what we'll do on the giveaway is uh, a typical thing I like to do, which leave a comment in, uh, when this video is available after the live, because right now the, the live chat's going on and you can't leave comments, but as soon as we wrap it up, it'll process to be available for regular viewing. That way uh, you, you'll see the chat room happening as it was recorded. And then below the video, you can leave a comment. You don't have to just say anything you want. Um, that will enter you into the contest. When we pick a winner, or winners will pick three. When I say we, I mean you will pick three because <laughs> I know these people, I know many, and I don't want it to seem biased. Okay. You don't, so uh -huh. you're, you will be completely random. You don't know who anybody is. And then what I'll do is I will respond to your comment saying, congratulations, you're a winner. You'll get a little heart next to your comment. And I will tell you to email me to proceed with how you can collect your winnings, if you will. And look at this, we've got uh, the viewers chiming in from Putnam, New York, Red Bank, New Jersey, Bonnie, Scotland, Qatar, Ottawa, Canada, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, apparently uh, someone's in a cornfield. Uh, Andrew is from Manchester, UK, Soul Hill, UK. Watching from Franklin, Pennsylvania, Heath, Ohio, London, England, Sydney, Australia, Sharon, Massachusetts, Dublin, Ireland, Philadelphia. What's YK? YK? I think they meant UK. Romania. Hi, Carrie. And Hi, Carrie from Cary, North Carolina. Falkirk, Scotland, New Jersey, Clement, Florida, Malaysia, UK, and impressed with this software. That's DSL DG2. Hidley, Lancashire. What is the minimum bandwidth requirement? Any, any, st any regular high-speed internet. I've even got customers who use uh, satellite, and it's fine. UK, another viewer in UK, a viewer in Greece, a viewer in Hertfordshire. Lots of UK viewers. Norway, of course. Well, Wyoming, Athens, Greece, Sweden. Rialto, California, Dorset in the UK. Belgium, Canberra, Australia, London. Wonderful. Thanks all you guys for joining us live here. Uh, we are, I am in Phoenix, Arizona, and Corey has come all the way out. Uh, or did he? Is this nothing more than a green screen? <laughs> <laughs> and it, you're just a CGI effect. It's almost like I can touch you. <laughs> you're like, please don't touch me. Okay. Uh, South Africa, and he says, I will definitely use the software in my new business. It looks great. That's from uh, Conway, Conrad. Sheepers, I like it when people appear to have real names. I, th I assume that's a real name rather mm. than all of these handles. Some of these handles I don't even know how to say. The goat is in Belfast, Belfast North Ireland. Um, um, Irving T, I know for a fact, is in France. I think he's the only person in France watching us. <laughs> France, for, it, you may not know this, it's kind of like Montreal. Really? Uh, let's see what else we have. Thanks for the help. Black Dog is in Colorado. With the D7 integrated tools, this is from Aaron Lynch. If I do an unattended repair using them, is there a report I can save on the customer's desktop or email to them showing them what was done and removed? There are reports that, uh, that you can do. I'm not sure if they enumerate everything that you've done. Um, it's something I'd have to go back to the documentation and take a look. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure on, on, on that one. Pat Hacker says, how can you have a keyboard but no tower or monitor? Um, this may be a surprise to you, but the room we're in is bigger than the screen you can see. Uh, there could be like 75 people just right over there and right over there. You would never know. In fact, this whole thing could be an illusion. This tower is actually on the floor 
and the screen is the screen I'm looking at right now, and that's why I can't see the chat room when we're looking at the screen, if that makes any sense. Um, that's the magic of video, folks. Question, does the, t I like how people preface a question by saying question, <laughs> answer. All right, sorry. Question, does the tools in D7 portion get updated regularly, or do we need to update them ourselves? They get updated regularly. Um, you can update them yourself as well. So you can go into the config tab and change change whatever you did, like or dislike and add and remove. It's fully tools. customizable. Fully That's customizable, yeah. Patrick Russoff, thank you for that question. Steve uh, Jennigan says hello from Lower Alabama. Hello, Steve, thanks for joining us. Solo wants to know, is Dell Connect a version of this software? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with Dell Connect. Apparently the answer is no. No, the answer is no. Um, Pat Hacker says, thank you for explaining. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, what else do we have? Again, guys, if you have questions, now's the time to ask, or we are going to wrap up the feed. I don't want this to be a three or four hour marathon because Corey has a life unlike me. Um, but yes, we want to take advantage. Uh, we've got the founder and creator of the software sitting right here. This is literally, no, it's not literally, the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that almost came out completely wrong. But there's no hearsay. What he tells you, who, who knows better? Who's better than you? With Instant House Call. I mean, fair who enough. knows it better than you? Yeah, fair So enough. take advantage of that, guys. If you have a question, please take advantage of this. I mean, I assume you probably visit the comment section and may answer some questions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you're back home. Stan says hello from London. Cheers, Stan. Is the automation software related to D7X? Yes. Yeah, it's the same thing. That's from Nick Poverman. Yeah, same thing? It's different UI, say, but same, same concept. concept. Yeah. What's up with the VIO? It's just, I just needed a machine to test. I, I needed to hook up. Guys, I, I, I have a streaming computer. We need a sending computer. We need a receiving computer to demo. There's wires and cables everywhere in here. <laughs> And this was easy to have a keyboard, mouse, and screen. It was one less bundle of wires I had to set up. It was quick and dirty. And this is Windows 7. And the machine over there is Windows 10. It showed that the interoperability between Windows 7 and 10 with the interaction with Instant House Call, rather than just say it, we demonstrated it. I think that speaks volumes much more than words do. Pat DeMarco says hello from Staten Island. Nick says apparently they use D7 at his work, and thank you. Thanks for your question, Nick. Mike Ladd says, if I ran a business, I'd definitely use this software, and I would recommend it to friends I know and will do. Thank you, Corey. Well, Mike, start a business. There you go. We're giving you the tools. Now get to work. Laptop fan is giving it some. Well, if that's really bothering you guys, um, yeah, the laptop fan is a bit loud in here. Harry, do you employ people? Oh, look, people are looking for jobs. Do you employ people to work from home? I, 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 I do employ people, and they do work from home. Darren Gilholm says, hello from Newcastle, UK. I like your beer. I like your beer? Newcastle? You ever had Newcastle? Oh, no. Oh, it's a good beer. It's oh. a brown beer. Really? Brown ale. Mm. It's good. I don't even like brown ale. <laughs> well, I guess I do, if it's Newcastle. Great product and great stream. Thank you, Patrick. Kind, thank you for your kind words and support. Nick says he'll be talking to his admin about this software. We appreciate that. Steve Larkin says hello from the UK. Carrie, when you get very rich, stay as nice as you are. Yes, I will remember all of you little people. Bill Leather then joins us from the UK. Bill's a, a longtime supporter of the channel. Uh, thank you, Bill. <laughs> Michael C. says it's real ale. Mm. I guess we're back to Newcastle again. Mm. There's that 90 second delay I was telling you about. Right. Hello from Daytona Beach, Florida. That's from John Sunchak. 
Spider-Man the hero wants to know if you can update drivers on the customer computers. Let me tell you something about updating drivers. If you were to update a driver that caused the machine to no longer boot, you're going to get in your car, I think. I mean, what are you going to do? If, if a driver prevents the machine from booting, uh -huh. you can't get into Windows, you can't get into Instant House Call or any other remote right. software. Right. You better be very careful, if you're, depending on the driver. Um, be very so the answer is yes. Anything you can do with the keyboard and mouse at the customer's desk is what you can do remotely with the keyboard and mouse at the customer's desk. Uh, driver installs pretty easy, but driver installs, especially if you're using a third-party driver utility, sometimes make mistakes and misidentify hardware. And a lot of times the only way to fix that is either to have a very knowledgeable customer who can follow your directions. Um, but if you're going to teach your customer your job, they might just realize they don't need you anymore. Or you have to get in the car and go undo what you just did. So tread lightly. If someone is using a VPN, will the software work? We answered that already, yes. Um, hello from Fresno, great job on demos in real time. That's from Mark Gossman. Thank you, Mark. I do this on my channel to show real video. Uh, this is not in any way edited. What you see is live. Anybody that joined us yesterday knows that's true. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, we can laugh now. Um, Colin McGarry says hello from Ireland. Slancha, Colin, how often do I use remote software? That's like asking me how often customers call me for help. Some days it never ends and some days is like apparently my weekend. This is the thing about being self-employed. I don't get to clock in and clock out. If the phone didn't ring from any customers today, apparently that was my Saturday, even if it was a Tuesday. Generally, I get most of my support calls on a Monday. That's because people have shut their computers off, as most people do on a Friday after work and they come back in on Monday and that's when they realize there's a problem. That's another reason why I recommend leaving all computers on, uh, desktop computers only, not tablets, not laptops, because they, they run into cooling problems, just like external drives. They shouldn't be plugged in 24 seven, they can overheat. So if it's a desktop computer, I recommend leaving it on 24 seven for the most reliability. You will have to restart from time to time, but Windows will take care of that for you with Windows updates at least once a month anyway, but you should, I recommend restart once a week just to clear out any memory leaks and, and bring the system performance back. Uh, will I have more videos this week? Well, how many days are left this week? Just one. <laughs> just one. Just one more day. I think. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how the schedule is. Could someone who owns a computer repair shop who builds PCs use this to work on PCs? Anything that you do that doesn't involve turning a screwdriver, plugging things in, obviously, if it involves using a a keyboard and a mouse, it doesn't matter if you're in front of the computer or if you're thousands of miles away. It's, a, it's sort of cool when I realized for the first time, sitting in an office that had 15 computers, pretty big office, mm -hmm. it was faster for me to log in remotely while I was in the office mm -hmm. to connect to the other computers in the office than it was for me to get out of my chair and walk right. to the computer. Right. That's a weird state of world we're living in right now. The software looks incredible, very intuitive. This is from Craig Nightingale. Well, certainly give us a go. Thanks for bringing the software to our attention, Carrie. Don't think Carrie, think Corey. I would think Wednesdays after the Windows updates would be bad times. I have not seen any bad Windows updates in a long time. Windows updates are some of the most thoroughly beta tested applications with larger beta test crowds than in the history of mankind with computers and beta testing. So it's pretty rare that a Windows update gets through beta testing with the thousands, tens of thousands of beta testers. It's very rare. So no, it rarely, rarely ever happens. In cases of a machine not booting to Windows, do you have a live CD that I can download on another machine? Well, that's an interesting question. Have you ever considered that? I have actually, like a WinPE type of environment. Yeah, where yeah. customers so you could say, go to another machine, download this, maybe a USB stick or something, and plug it in and then that'll give me remote access. So I have thought about it and I have not executed on it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure my customers could follow that. Most of them only have, when I talk about residential, mm -hmm. they only have the one computer and then they sometimes have really slow download speeds. I had to download Microsoft Office 2016, it was four and a half gigs mm. on a business that has DSL, mm -hmm. four hours. Mm.
Does Instant House Call have redundant servers in case one is down? Yes, it does. That's from MK. Good question. Thank you for that, MK. Corey, uh, for full disclosure, Corey is not paying me to be here. This is not a sponsored video. I like Corey. Um, I like his product. And I asked Corey if he would come to the show, if he would, if he would be interested. In fact, I have been asking you this relentlessly since, when did we first meet? A long time. I tried nailing you down in Chicago. He is, believe it or not, he's not a natural on camera. He's very self-conscious of being on camera. And I applaud him, not only for finally, uh, um, <laughs> what's the word I want to look for? I finally wore him down, but, <laughs> but you can see he's very, he's natural. I don't know why, what is, what's your problem? You're fine. Everybody loves you. Cool. You, you should do this more. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not just giving you okay. lip service. Okay. I want to, you know, I, and I've told you this, when I make a video where I like a product, mm -hmm. people are like, well, how much did they pay you to say that? I showed that NZXT case off, and someone's like, well, that's right. a nice commercial for NZXT. I just like it. Right. But right. if I say a product is terrible... The internet's a very skeptical place. Yeah, but if I say a product is horrible and you should avoid it, they go, you get them, Kerry. <laughs> Nobody says, well, you were paid by the competitor to do that. They never do that. Never. Trust me. I like this product. I'm going to be... I am switching over to this. I, I've just been waiting. Um, I'll be honest. I, and you guys know this if you've been watching my videos. I'm a creature of habit. I stick to what I know. And as a result of that, I end up doing things in a more difficult way. But for me, it all takes time to learn something. And then, I, you know, then I've got to wean the other customers off. And re, I've got to take one remote access off and put another one on. I've got it on who knows how many computers. It's not an easy changeover. So I want to be absolutely certain that I'm giving up what I know and accepting its flaws because it's easier than learning something new and having to install it in all my customers' computers. But at this point, and especially after this demo, this is the first time that you and I have sat down to really go through every bell, whistle, and feature, and it does far more than I ever considered. And th there's a lot that we actually didn't even cover. Like but, what? Like, um, we didn't do the actual branding. Terms and conditions, so you're able to set it up so that your customer has to agree to terms and conditions. Nobody reads that. Nobody reads it, but, but it it's is good, good to have there on, yeah, to, to cover your butt. Um, the ability to ask your customer to type their contact information before a session. Um, scripted unattended installs, so that if, you're, if you've got an RMM and you want to push out... Uh, RMM remote manage. Remote monitoring and management tool. Um, and you want to push out instant house call to your customer's endpoints, you can do it through a script. Um, there is OnSite, which is a, a phone app um, that if your customer has a hardware problem, then they can use their phone and take a picture and it'll show up through your specialist console. Hmm. Um, all kinds of stuff. I had a customer say to me, I said, I need you to reboot your computer. They said, which one's the computer? I said, it's the black box with, uh, with like a light on it. Mm -hmm. And she goes, does it say Netgear on it? I go, no, that's your router. Does it say surfboard on it? I go, no, that's your modem. Those are the only two black boxes I got. I go, is there another box regardless of the color with a light on it? Nope. Well, it turned out she had one of those all-in-one monitors. Mm. And so she was turning the monitor off. So she thought she was turning the computer off. Of course, off. of course. Oh, it was so hard to figure out because <laughs> I, I think I had been to her location like six months earlier. I, I don't remember what she had. Right. If she could have taken a picture of it, right. this would have happened a lot quicker. But even then, sometimes getting some of these uh, digital immigrants, these older folks right. generally, uh, who are uh, not natural to the technology, mm -hmm. even getting them to take a picture yeah. can be a challenge. I had a customer, I said, okay, I'm going to help you reset your password. They're going to send you a text, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the text comes, it says, enter the code Google sent you for your Gmail password. Mm -hmm. Well, the customer enters the code. It's the wrong code. I'm like, how could you be entering the wrong? Are you reading your phone? Yes, I'm reading it. I see it right here on my phone. Well, that's who the message was from. The, the text message comes from 288671, and then the message says, your code is 4802. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, why did they do that? Right, it's right, so right. confusing right. for these I, poor folks. Yeah. Uh, 
it's just a learning curve for your customers as well. And no, that's what I like about uh, Ailson House School. This is all on the tech side. There's really nothing on the learning curve on the customer side. Not really. So seventy-five dollars a month for full spec. What does he mean? He's referring to the professional edition. What does that do differently? It does everything the exact same, except it has more features. Such as? Such as the on-site remote hardware repair, the scripted unattended install, um, more unattended access endpoints. Um, more simultaneous connections. More simultaneous connections. So that'd be more like a uh, repair center with multiple Although a, a, a little secret just for your viewers, we don't actually throttle on the um, the, the number of simultaneous connections right now. So whether you buy the Uno edition or the professional edition, you can actually have multiple uh, unattended, even though it doesn't say that on the website. You, you, you're too honest. <laughs> <laughs> Is the software HIPAA compliant? Um, it, it, it's not HIPAA audited, if that's what they're referring to. Um, it depends on what, what exactly that means. So does it use SSL? Yes, it uses SSL. So Corey's from Canada. Yeah. So HIPAA doesn't apply in Canada. HIPAA does not does not apply in Canada. Is the is the connection between me and my customer encrypted? Yes, SSL version three. Let's see if I missed anything here, and then we'll wrap it up. But the an the the answer to something being HIPAA compliant is much longer than yes or no because it requires a whole bunch of stuff on their side too. Gotcha. I was wondering if he would show it using real people's computers in future videos. You know, there's a privacy issue there. Probably not. I don't think I would connect to a, a customer's computer, even with their permission. I, I don't want to show you their desktop icons and, and their, their uh, who knows what potential information could pop up. So no, that's just too risky. Carrie and Corey's tech show. It's got a good ring to it. Why not Corey and Carrie's tech show? Is it always alphabetized like Abbott and Costello? Yes, yes. Wait, Laurel and Hardy was backwards. Though, <laughs> so much for that theory. He's pretty camera friendly and cute. Well, there you go, Corey. Oh, are they talking about me? They must be talking about me. They're talking about you, of course. <laughs> I'm just looking through comments just to see if we missed anything. If you're just joining us, the DVR function is on on YouTube. That means you can rewind this live video right this second if you want to, just as you would any other video that you watch on YouTube. Okay, and uh, we're gonna scroll down looking for any last minute questions. This is it, folks. Is it applicable in Australia? It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, only when you flush it goes the other way. No, that's a rumor, that's not true. Uh, can you get BIOS level support via vPro? That's an Intel thing. I think Intel has that locked down. And I've never really found that to be incredibly useful. I, I can't recall a time, honestly, as a, as a technician with nearly 30 years of professional experience in the business, where I have needed to adjust something in the BIOS that was critical. Yes, there may be customers, not so much these days, but when we were switching over to AHCI and the, the BIOS defaults were IDE or SATA mode, um, it doesn't affect the reliability of the computer and the performance difference isn't really that noticeable to the end user at least in business and even residential they just want the darn thing to work in as quickly as possible as least expensive as possible so while getting into the BIOS can optimize some settings it is not something that I find to be critical to getting a computer to boot or function properly again there were some old BIOSes that perhaps after an update uh, they say the BIOS was in AHCI mode and then a BIOS update happened and the system won't boot anymore because it defaulted back to SATA mode, I would have to get in the car and change that. Or I would have to instruct a customer how to press delete or F12 or F2 and it's different on different makes and models of motherboards. And since you can't see that at boot up, the good news is with UEFI BIOSes, some manufacturers offer a software control into the UEFI through Windows. Uh, I've never utilized it. Again, I stick to what I'm used to. and. I've not found that to be uh, something I need. So, and again, you screw it up and you lock, lock yourself out. If you make the system unbootable, you start toying around with overclocking. <laughs> that would be really foolish. Let me see how far I can overclock this remotely. Not a good idea. Uh, you shouldn't do your own dental work either. Just saying, 
not advisable. Um, does it have a phone app for the tech? I don't no. think so. Um, let's see, Corey wouldn't know about, she's probably talking about FINRA, that's the financial side, right? Um, probably the same thing applies to HIPAA as FINRA, FINRA and HIPAA. What's that? You know FINRA? Uh, the financial institute. I know. I, I know of it. I, yeah. Again, it's not something that I'm. I'm an expert in. And I would not want to claim expertise. Whoa. Have you written any other software, or is this your first foray? I've written lots of software in the past. Um, it was typically used. So I, I, I used to work in telecom, and so all the software that I've written. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Exactly. exactly. So you worked in telecom, and so it was industry software. It was industry software, stuff like the you know porting your number between between faking caller ID, faking caller ID. I did that too. Are the D seven tools used? Does it leave anything on the customer's computer, or does it remove any trace of what the tech used? Remove, remove. Giving it. away the secrets is not good. We we don't show how we make the hot dogs. Yeah, no, excellent question. That's part of the remoteness of the um, uh, part of the remoteness of the D seven. Um, so it automatically gets cleaned up and uh, taken away, and and you're good to go from there. All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We're about an hour and 40 into this session. I think that's pretty thorough. Uh, I, I do believe the software, it, it, just D7 alone, we could talk about it for hours, all the bells, whistles, and features. I think there are already uh, a number of videos there. Maybe I'll reach out to Nick Shaw and see if maybe we can get together and talk about D7 in depth. But, uh, you know, to have that integrated into the remote software saves a, a step. Yep. You know, it's already there. You click a button. It makes you more efficient, it makes you more money, it makes your customer uh, spend less time with you, which generally uh, makes them happier to, that your time is money. Mm -hmm. Customers, uh, that's why I don't like to build customers by the hour, because they go, can you fix it in an hour? Right. I'm like, right, well, right. I would like to fix it right, no matter how long it takes. Right. And they're like, but would it take less than an hour? Right. So at least yes. anything that optimizes that is always good. Um, back to the live CC. Live CD, if I include installer on Windows 10 PE, will it work? What if he made his own live CD, like a pre-install CD of Windows 10, and put Instant House Call on it and gave it to his customer? I, I am very, I've never tested it, but I'm very yes. much inclined to say yes, absolutely, so. it should work. Yeah. I see no reason why it wouldn't. Superman G says, Carrie, good job on the camel work. I'm glad you appreciate that, <laughs> if you had any idea. <laughs> Where did you partake in video install with House Call two years ago? So Corey and I uh, were in Chicago at the CompTIA conference. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that, we were here at the CompTIA conference mm -hmm. in 2011. Mm -hmm. That was uh, in Phoenix in August, which is the worst possible time you could ever be in Phoenix. And so luckily you're here on September 6th. <laughs> Where it's much cooler. It's very, it's so cool here. Um, but it is better than it was last week, trust yeah, me. Yeah. It'll be better next week. It's not that bad. I'm, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> um, unfortunately, so when so Corey's a popular guy at the conventions. He's often got a booth uh, displaying his product and doing quick demos of the product and trying to pull him away from that when he's already uncomfortable as it is to be on camera has been uh, a chore. We tried to do it here in August, back a couple years ago. We tried to do it in Chicago. We both get, it's not just on him. We also, I got busy too, but I was screwing around. He was there for business. Um, and I ended up being there for business too. It really interfered with my screwing around. Carrie, I love your shirts. You have very good taste, Pat DeMarco. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, very kind words. Stephen Kinman, thank you. Sounds like good software. Corey, can you make a computer OS that's better than Windows? <laughs> <laughs> Get right on that. Uh, can you run the software on ports other than port 80? Uh, it, it, it doesn't run on port 80. Um, yeah, and then you don't need to say anything else. Yeah. Hello from Norfolk, UK. Does the website convert to local currency? As with me, it would be dollars to pounds. Uh, for, I'm assuming that that's for the accept online payment. Um, the accept online payment 
question? And the answer is yes. Uh, we can set the locale and the currency to whatever you want it to be. Rich Robin says it's only 105 degrees today, which to Corey means nothing. <laughs> it means nothing to him. But when you tell him it's, uh, uh, what is it, if, uh, minus 32 and divide it in half. So minus, let's see, 105 minus 32. Uh, it, it's like 30 some odd degrees Celsius, I think. Yeah, it's warm. It's, now you understand. Yeah, no, now I understand. And, and when he tells me how many kilometers something is, my eyes just glaze over and I nod. <laughs> this has been a constant issue with us. I don't realize I'm doing it. I'm like, yeah, that's just a few, yard, few yards down. He's like, how And far? him making fun of my accent. I never would ever say anything about your accent. <laughs> I would never, why, that would be so rude of me to, to have a guest here from out of town. <laughs> Who would win in an arm wrestling match between you? Look at these guns. I'm not going up against that. <laughs> and he's younger than me. What am I, stupid? Well, don't answer that. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much for all your participation. Thank you for your support, your kind words. We really appreciate it. My thanks to Corey for making a trip from of Toronto to Phoenix specifically to make this video. Uh, it's been a, a joy and a pleasure uh, to have you as my guest. And I hope that uh, I haven't scared you away from ever doing it again. Cool. Well, thank you very you, much you for having me. You were very good. Me. Seriously, you were very good. Thank you. I've learned a lot. I'm glad that we didn't talk off camera about this in depth because yep. my sincere... Uh, my reactions were real mm -hmm. to what I saw. If I acted surprised, it wasn't an act. I was surprised at some of the things I was not aware of. I had an idea. I wasn't completely blind. I had an idea, but I, some of the minutia, much of it, I haven't known until today mm -hmm. as, as they've learned it. Sorry, somebody just did the conversion for us. 40.5 40, 40. degrees Celsius. Whew. That's ridiculous. Sounds cold. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Everybody, once again, thanks for joining. Thanks for all my moderators for keeping it civil in the chat. I really do appreciate the work that you guys do. Again, to everybody who supports uh, both financially and just um, spiritually, thank you for your kind words and your support. And I do appreciate that you tune in, that you watch, and that you participate from all over the world. Thank you, guys. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Be sure one more time, the contest, three licenses to the three lucky winners. Uh, six month full use licenses. Corey will pick the winners in a few days. Leave a comment in the section below. Any comment will enter you into the contest. You know somebody's gonna write any comment. Of course. Now that I've said that. Of course. Um, maybe just write instant house call. That would be good. Let's do that. And I was gonna say something else. Contest. Oh, the website, one last time. Instanthousecall.com. All the notes are in the video, uh, the links are in the video notes below this video. I will see you all again very, very soon. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>